this really should be an election about character. Who do you trust to be the commander in chief? Who do you trust to, to, to wield that office and be looking out for you and not themselves? Pisco is smart, like Kamala Harris was smart in throwing out bait. And just like Trump took the bait, Gibbs takes the bait. So he does exactly what I said he it's would do. Bait. I think in the debate, she, she did good on the delivery, but she didn't do good on the policy. And that's why going back to the original query for the debate here tonight, I don't think she did really well. I kind of want to take a different tack, so let them finish this up, and I, I want to ask a different Andrew. No, you answer Rob's question, Hutch. Don't I run, answer, answer his question. question. No, you didn't answer, oh, answer his question. Did. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be debating the debate. So this debate's going to be good on the debate, and it's the presidential debate, debateception. Kamala versus Trump, Harris versus Trump. I just want to get straight into it. But first, we go around simple introductions. Keep it under 20 seconds. We don't need to know your life story. Let's start with Gibbs. Hey, yeah, my name is Admiral Gibbs. You find me everywhere doing Admiral, uh, as Admiral Gibbs on every platform. I do gaming. Uh, we do politics several nights a week. And uh, we do a lot of Halo-focused stuff and other sci-fi genres like Halo um, and uh, Star Wars and 40K and uh, college football. Thank you very much. Uh, he's also a pick from the Hippie Dippie Recruitment, so we're building it back up again. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, my name is Andrew Wilson. I'm the host of The Crucible. It is, to my knowledge, fastest growing debate channel on YouTube. I'm a political analyst, political satirist, and a blood sport debater. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to Hutch. Yeah, you can find me at youtube.com forward slash Hutch. We're doing daily uploads now on twitch.tv forward slash Hutch. Started off in gaming, been doing politics for like eight years. Fantastic. I'm going to throw it now over to IRI. I'm really important. I talk politics, stream Monday through Friday. That's about it. Perfect. You also watch a lot of C-SPAN. Uh, Joe. Yeah, my name is Joe Lewis, uh, J-O-O-E-L-E-W-I-S. Um, once again, thanks again for having me. I'm an alternate for somebody who dropped out, so I very much appreciate um, the last-minute throw-in, but I'm very glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Erudite could not join us today due to sickness. Uh, hopefully, we can get her at another time. We're going to throw it over to Pisco. Thank you, Dylan. Really appreciate being here. Thank you for the invite. Uh, I'm Pisco. I talk about law on Twitter a lot and occasional uh, debate uh, politics or, or legal issues on Twitch or on YouTube, that kind of thing. Uh, you can follow me on Pisco Liddy on Twitter. Okay. Uh, Rob Noor. Rob Noor, Populist Conservative. Uh, my YouTube channel is Normal America with Rob Noor. Probably the best place to find me. All other platforms, just Rob Noor. Happy to be here. And Turk. I go by The Turk. I can be found on YouTube at The Turk as well as Twitter. I do a lot of uh, PCs, computer gaming, and I'm a resident master knowledgeable expert of the console wars so pc master race is the best race fantastic if you could turn up your mic volume just slightly that would be fantastic okay so we're going to go through the rule set quick before i pose the question just so nobody can say they did not know uh number one any use of slurs will not be tolerated we are streaming on both twitch and youtube so please do not get my channel banned i was already just you know demonetized for 10 months i'd like money uh, violations will lead to immediate consequences. We will ban you so we can try to keep our channel. Um, if uh, do, do, all participants are expected to adhere to the terms of service, you get the idea, uh, you know, behave, behave, don't do toss violations. When I'm speaking, you guys must remain silent. I'm not trying to give my opinion. I don't give my opinion during these. I am simply just trying to moderate or possibly ask a follow-up question if there's just too much noise and no one can hear it. Um, I will be semi-aggressive. We have a lot of aggressive personalities and people who don't like each other, okay? And I know that. So I will be slightly aggressive with some mutes today. Um, I'm not picking on you. I just want the viewers to hear what is being said. If they're not hearing what's being said, it's not a show. It's for you. It's for the audience. I like everybody, Dylan. What do you mean? I never said anything about that. I didn't, yeah, why they're all my, they're all, you, bro, they're all my besties, bro. Of course. You go way back with yeah. all of them. All back to college. Um, when the uh, opening and closing statements are to be delivered without interruption. So if you hear somebody say something mean about you, uh, even though personal attacks are not allowed, um, you got to wait and respond in point during your time to speak during introductions. Try to keep them to two minutes. Anything over that will eventually be interrupted because we got a show to run. Brevity and clarity are key. Um, okay, and that's it. Everybody understand the rules? Oh, good. Fantastic. Most of you have done this before, so I don't think it's that confusing. We're going to open with the presidential debate. What is your reaction to what we just saw between Harris and Trump? Uh, do you think Trump won? Do you think Harris won? How do you think it went? And how does it reflect on the race? We're going to start with Gibbs. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, maybe like on points, uh, Harris won. Uh, but like, I think Trump asked some key questions, uh, especially in his closing. I think the things he said are going to stick with the populace, especially when some of them ended up being true. I know everybody's going to want to talk about the dogs thing, which is like, oh, hyperbolic. But, you know, whenever one of these crazy, insane statements like the uh, transgender surgeries for uh, illegal immigrants in prisons actually turned out to be a true thing that she was advocating for, you know, I heard the left be real silent and kind of ignore that. So I think that there's going to be some questions. I think asking why um, she hasn't done anything in the three and a half years she's been there's a pretty good question good way to close i think it was very strategic um but i think she might she was very good in the debate um and maybe caught trump a little off guard especially in that middle section okay gotta throw it over to andrew yeah so this was um a subpar debate on both ends uh, i think that trump barely got the best of it and the reason that he barely got the best of it is uh harris really needed to have a decent showing and she really didn't she didn't really outline any kind of new ideas for America whatsoever. There was nothing that wasn't just kind of a typified progressive policy. Um, Trump, on the other hand, didn't have his kind of normal zingers, but he got a couple of good shots in there. Ultimately, I don't think the debate changed anybody's mind, and I don't think that uh, that either one of them are eager to have another one. I saw today that Trump did not uh, did not want to have another debate. So, yeah, I would say that the edge went to Trump. Um, Harris also had the disadvantage of being a woman. And, um, you know, she she I think that she handled that better than most by not being kind of like a shrill brat. Uh, but ultimately, she needed to have a, a better performance day. And she really didn't. Hutch. Well, I think the polls uh, across the board have demonstrated that it's somewhere around 50 percent of the people thought she won the debate. Twenty five percent of the people thought that Trump won the debate and 25 percent were undecided. So the public at large. Uh, Shirley seems to believe that she got the better of it by pretty much a landslide. Trump seemed like he was phoning it in the entire time. It was pretty low energy. If you compare his debate performance from 2016, it's quite obvious that he is not the same man that he was back then. Not quite as bad as Biden in the last debate, obviously, but definitely, uh, definitely low energy. I think Kamala went in there with a game plan to uh, get under his skin and rattle him. Uh, and I think uh, she was obviously successful in doing that. He spent far less time attacking her than she spent attacking him because he was spending most of his time uh, defending himself. She would throw a little bit of bait into each answer, and he took the bait every single time. I think she went into it clearly prepared, and she executed on that plan. So I don't think there's any question who won this debate. Okay, I'm going to throw it over now to Irai. Yeah, I think Trump reminded a lot of people about why we don't want him back in the White House. He shined a racist spotlight on Springfield, Ohio, spreading this nonsense about Haitian immigrants are abducting people's pets and eating them. And he looked like a fool. TikTok is tearing him up right now over it. He's also hanging out with this clown, Laura Loomer, another racist who calls Kamala Shaniqua. So I don't think Donald Trump had a great debate. He looked like a fool. And Kamala outlined some policy. Let's give new families six thousand uh, dollars tax credit so they can buy a crib, they can take care of expenses in that first year. Let's give first-time home buyers a twenty-five thousand dollar credit so they can get uh, assistance with a down payment. So I think Kamala rocked it. She had a great debate, and I think she did what she had to do. She didn't have to hit a home run. She just had to hit a single or a double, and she out she outperformed what a lot of people thought she would do. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not going just one after the other. I'm trying to do like two conservatives, two left, two and going back and forth. So next, I'm going to throw it over to Rob Noor. Okay, first off, not the topic that I was told. I was told that the topic was going to be who is positioned to better lead the country, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. I hope that is we that get to that, but I don't that mind, I don't mind talking about- I thought about... it was the debate. No, the topic that I was- yeah, that wasn't the topic I was given either. Uh, but that's fine. I don't mind. I'm flexible. So hopefully we get to that. And I think it'll further illustrate the point that I have on this debate in the first oh, place. Sounds like a classic bait and switch, Rob. Because now I'm because bamboozled, I am going, bamboozled. Now listen, I am going to take the position that I think Kamala Harris won the debate. So it oddly puts me now like maybe on the panel with the lefties to some degree, but I don't think it'll move the needle in any way. The reason is because Kamala Harris is running from all adversarial sort of questioning of her positions whatsoever. She is literally just running her campaign like the Biden administration did in 2020, which is a campaign from a basement that's running on things like vibes and leaving her surrogates do everything. She literally has so few policy positions that she's pretending to be Trump and crib his policy positions because the 
left always has to pretend to be Republicans when it comes to elections because their positions are so unpopular. So she's trying to do that. She's literally copying and pasting her positions from the Biden administration that the metadata shows it was just directly from Biden. And so she throws out a couple. So yeah, twenty thousand dollars families bubble. Let's throw money out. But she didn't really ever define who she is. This was Trump's chance to do so. He took the bait. Didn't do a good job of defining her. So I give him a C minus, maybe a D plus. I give Kamala Harris a C, maybe C plus because she didn't do anything for people that are undecided to be more comfortable with voting for. In fact, a lot of the polling shows that on the key questions such as the economy, actually people are less impressed with her after her debate performance than before the debate performance because she didn't do anything to really inform the American people of what she would do or why she hasn't done it. She is trying to run a campaign as if she's an agent of change when she is the de facto incumbent. She hasn't answered for the fact that she covered up for the mental decline, just like every lefty on this panel, for the mental decline of Joe Biden. And she claims that she was the last person in the room in many of these topics. That means she is directly adhered to the Biden administration, their failed policies. And as you'll see in this panel, we'll have to talk about things like Trump talking about cats or vibes or J.D. Vance is weird because everyone on this panel knows, despite what they'll try to gaslight you to believing, that the Trump administration was more effective for the majority of Americans than the Harris-Biden administration. And so they'll do everything possible to not talk about the disastrous record and the fact they gaslit the American people for four years saying the economy is great, the border is great, foreign policy is great, when it's all disaster under the Harris-Biden administration. So I just checked. The question was, who is better to lead the United States into the future, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? Parentheses, post-presidential debate. We can open with the presidential debate, then we'll go to that question in it. Uh, because I think we start with the debate, then we'll move into those topics. Or, you know, it'll be an outgrowth anyway. We're going to throw it over to Turk. Yeah, so I actually, is that louder now? Is that good enough, Dylan? It's perfect. Cool. Uh, so I largely agree with what some of the things Hutch said and resonate more with what Rob and Andrew said. I think that Kamala performed better during the debate. She was able to articulate uh, some of the platitudes that she's been putting out throughout her different uh adventures and her presentations she's been doing at uh the rallies and stuff but i i do believe that uh things were really stacked against trump uh in many different reven uh, avenues uh being fact checked multiple times whereas there were plenty of obvious things that have been debunked that kamala was able to put out a lot of times that no one was able to push her on except for trump never got to flush those out uh, but when it comes to policy positions, um, I could debate with IRI on some of what Kamala presented. I think what Trump presented could have been presented better, but I do believe that uh, Trump's uh, platform is a little more sound, a little more rounded and more defined. Uh, and I I would have to give Trump that edge on that on during the debate. Okay, now we're going to throw it over to Joe Lewis. Yeah, I want to make something pretty clear because I'm definitely in confrontation to the other more liberal people on this panel as somebody who voted uncommitted within my primary and somebody who also plans to vote green for this election. So I want to make it very clear that I have no stretch of the imagination in support of Kamala Harris, nor will I want to support the Democratic Party moving forward. With that being said, in the confines of the debate itself, I do believe that Kamala did what she had to do in terms of poking Donald Trump, but I'm not exactly convinced that seems to be something that's a very big challenge to do, since he pretty much took every single bait that she lobbied, even the small things. So that was very frustrating to watch. My concern moving forward are a few clear things. I think it's in the best interest of the American people for them to debate as often as possible moving forward. I think that that has to be in some capacity in a more diverse environment. That means that you need to have something within the DNC and RNC apparatus, and then something also within the Fox News apparatus. I think what would be beneficial if I am somebody within Trump's camp is to keep the debates concentrated. So having it focus on a particular policy, something that was very frustrating for me is that education wasn't really a topic of the debate. Housing wasn't a topic of this debate. Voter expansion or lack thereof wasn't a conversation. They were talking about, Kamala was talking about gun ownership and there was a school shooting less than seven days prior. That's embarrassing and really rough to watch. And 
and with that being said i i do strongly support moving forward that they have more debates i think it's in the best interest of the american people so i really hope trump and kamala can figure that out um i do think she did a great job or the best as she could but if we're talking if we're talking about grades it's like a b minus for kamala and then a d plus if not c minus for trump but again we're not they're not talking to those who are on this panel they're talking to the undecided voters the moderates the more people closer to the center to try to move them one way or another so that's going to be the hard part for both of them and we're going to throw it to pisco to wrap us up thank you thank you um so i don't really think it's up for debate that kamala won the debate i think practically i don't know three out of four conservatives here either say that she clearly won or it was a wash. And so, uh, you know, in polls suggested as well, um, in terms of optics, it was a no brainer. Uh, Kamala Harris was clearly more polished, more prepared. On the point about taking the bait, I don't think, for example, um, people talking about the crowd size thing or the cats and dogs thing, that that is just a optic point. It actually is a substantive point. And let me give you an example. Right now in my opening, I could take the bait of what Andrew said about shrill women and start talking about that and acting all offended. But I have a strategy going into this discussion. I have a strategy because I want to talk about certain things and I don't want to talk about other things and drag down discussions into like uh, points that are not what I care to argue about at the moment. And Trump showed that he is unable to control his urges, unable to control what he wants to discuss and what he wants to, and what he would be advantageous for him to discuss. I don't think that that would be policy. If you, you know, started listening to the debate about any kind of specific policy prescription, I challenge you to bring something up other than, uh, you know, a destructive 10% tariff across the board. Um, and that shows to me a lack of leadership, a lack of preparedness for the office of presidency. And the other thing that shows a complete to the American people lack of preparation and fitness for the office is his continued lie about the 2020 election. This is a man who tried to steal the presidential election in 2020 and undo and upend our constitutional process. The people saw it once again, that he has no respect for the dignity of this country, its founding principles whatsoever. He continues to promote the lie that he won when he lost. Kamala Harris, on the other hand, put a dignified performance, absolutely obliterated him on multiple policy issues, and especially that one, the notion that this is a man who's all about himself and will do anything, even destroy this country and its constitution for his own benefit. Okay, so we're gonna start with the debate, but like halfway through, can you can only debate a debate so much, we're probably gonna shift away totally from it. I think the debate conversation will probably move us towards policy and like the differences between the candidates anyway. But I'm gonna start with Andrew because Andrew is the one that disagrees the most, so it makes sense to throw it to him first. Um, Andrew, would you like to expand at all about why you think Trump might have edged out on the debate? Yeah, well, he just had, um, he had kind of better zingers. The thing is, is that Harris didn't present any kind of new vision for America is just a continuation of Biden policies. There was nothing extravagant that she said which stood out. There was no kind of great reforms that she's promoting. There, I mean, uh, even when I looked at her plan, I was looking at her plan this morning in preparation for the debate. She's not really doing much. She's adding 4% to the corporate tax rate. Um, and that's about it. I mean, there's not really much in the way of deviation. She wants the same type of assault weapons ban. She wants all the kind of same... Uh, progressive tripe that we've been hearing about nonstop for years. So there's there's just really nothing that makes her stand out. There's nothing that makes her exceptional in this race. She looks like exactly what she is, somebody who was swept in there in order to be the candidate for the Democrat because Joe Biden lost his fucking minds and, and Democrats hid that for uh, well over a year knowing that he was in cognitive decline and would have uh, pushed him out there as being completely fit for office, even knowing he was in cognitive uh, decline. And other Democrats came to the rescue of him and said, well, it's OK to go ahead and elect this guy who has the mental capacity of an infant because he'll have good staff around him to, and he'll be a nice puppet president for the Democrats. So I thought that that was bullshit. But she looks at like exactly what she is, a hasty replacement where nobody else was available who she was there. And so they're using her. But there was absolutely nothing which made her stand out. I'd love to hear any policy from any of these liberal scumbags on this panel. Any policy that makes Kamala Harris stand out, they won't be able to name a single one, not one. So, Andrew, just, 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 so first home buyers. 
just so I'm clear in terms of talking about your, because you mentioned the concern about distinction, right? Which I would agree with you that you didn't really do too, too much in terms of establishing that distinction. But it seems like what um, I'm sure Hutch and I or I, and especially Pisco are going to argue, is that there was a distinction there. So if you were to be charitable, what do you think would be the response of certain things of distinction? Were there any points of distinction in your eyes in the debate? Distinction between who? Trump and Kamala? I, I, I got one. The, yeah, I the mean, I'm already winners. So go ahead. I was just saying, I, I already went over uh, the distinction in performance, but when you get to the meat and potatoes of what it actually is, Kamala looks like exactly what she is. Somebody who the Democrats turned to in desperation because the candidate that they wanted in there, who probably would have easily beaten Trump by their estimation, Joe Biden, uh, is unfit. And we knew, knew this as soon as the first debate was done, that he was in massive cognitive de decline and that this was hidden from the American public, even though Democrats knew it. She looked like exactly what she was, just a ringer who was there, who the Democrats turned to. She didn't look polished. Like Pisco said, that's fucking cope. She also didn't have any great policy positions that made her stand out. There was no great kind of Hang on a second, progressive you made a claim turning. Before. You made a claim before that we couldn't identify a single policy that she put forward. Is no, I didn't. Before? That's not what well, I said. Well, was, okay, so, so you are you able at this moment? Pisco, what did I say, bro? What did I say? You said that none of the Democrat left wing people on this panel are going to be able to identify a single policy proposal nope. to keep it out. Nope, that, I didn't. Or a nope, that's proposal? incorrect. You're an idiot. So, re restate, re restate, re restate your claim. Restate yeah, your claim. You got to stop talking then. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. so I'll stop talking. Go to the VOD. I said you would not you, find I? a single Wait, policy position that made her stand out, Pisco. How about the how about the purchase? What would you think about the purchase of or the construction of three million new homes? That was a policy put oh, out. Oh, oh, oh there's so, gonna be three I, million new want, homes. Oh, I really there, made her stand out. That, what a great policy for a little bit more charitable so, 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 here. So, so, so that's what we have here, right? So anything that we propose that we think will either, either be incremental or be different, this is a policy that neither Trump proposed, that Biden didn't propose. It is a novel policy would you acknowledge that andrew it's not no i don't think it's novel democrats have been talking about the rebuilding of america through infrastructure every single election of my Our lifetime infrastructure yeah, yeah, yes Our they're infra yes. infrastructure yes of course it's what, what, infrastructure it's not infrastructure andrew what are you talking about is everything infrastructure everything that the government is going to build if they're going to build public oh, okay. housing yeah i would consider that to be infrastructure would sure you, would you consider the you know the government is just like uh giving checks to people to spend on their uh rent is that infrastructure no that would be uh like uh welfare oh so what's the definition of infrastructure for you why are we being pedantic with this? Just because tell me what, what you want, Pisco. Get to like what you're, you're getting to. What you're trying to do is you're trying to put a big label on it and say infrastructure and mm -hmm. say, well, it's just the same kind of infrastructure policy as before because, look, Biden had an infrastructure policy. <laughs> you know that there's a difference in kind between proposing purchasing homes and purchasing yeah, I don't think it like, made it stand out, Pisco. They're different, Pisco. Right? It didn't this make it a, stand out, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, not to you because you're going to say that we – Yeah, no, yeah, because you're – The next day was like, oh, God, did you hear Kamala's – Yeah, yeah, new home. Nobody said that, Peace Go. Nobody gives okay, a shit. Wait, wait. So, okay, how about well, Pisco, Pisco, clear, about three million homes? Peace Pisco, Go. Nobody fucking cares. Clearly say why three million. Wait, people don't care about. Peace Go. Clearly say why three million homes matter, and then we'll have Andrew just respond clearly yeah, instead of yeah, talking so, over each other. So clearly, the American people have made it um, abundantly apparent to everybody that housing prices and the price of housing is a big concern of theirs. In fact, it's one of the big uh, sources of angst in America and Middle America, as well as in other countries, Canada, UK. Everyone is going through a cost of li living crisis in this country, and for Andrew. Oh, who the fuck cares about houses? Who the fuck cares about prices and homes? Yeah, Show nobody cares. On here. He doesn't care. And, and what's more is Andrew sort of builds himself as a person for the family. Isn't that what you want? Don't you want permanent homes, people to have connections? No, and you know what happens when the government okay. goes yeah. in and they build low-income housing homes is it brings in a people with low income, brings everybody's housing prices way Who? down. Peace go. That's Who's what that? ends up happening. Peace low go. Low-income houses. Bro, are you going to let me finish? My turn. Yeah. I just let you talk. Remember how I did that? You're going to do the same thing for me. So here's what happened, okay? You Anytime the government— times, any, Oh, sorry, Hutch. Is, are you going to cry? Hutch, or you go cry, Hutch. You want me to go get you a little bit of it out. Okay, okay I want to let's, let's, we'll let, we, okay, we're going to let Andrew finish. We're going to go down. Fucking time. We're going to let Andrew finish. We have other people that want to talk, so I don't want to get to others. I know Turk's been waiting patiently. So, Andrew, finish your point. Yeah, anytime the government decides that they're going to build houses for people uh, and get them out there, I'm guessing you want to get them in the hands of those who need them the most, which are going to be lower-income people who probably don't qualify for them under today's market. Otherwise, why would you be fucking building them? 
That's Otherwise, the, hey, let me finish Bisco. Bisco, let me finish Bisco. Otherwise, why would you build him? If, you, if people just qualified for him right now and could go get him, you wouldn't need to fucking build him. So you're going to be building him for the people who don't qualify for him. And since that is the case, you're going to be building him for people with low income. Low income people are going to come in. It's going to drive the pricing of housing down. That's all Democrats ever do. They're scumbags. don't give a shit about anybody except themselves. And of course, it's not their money. What do they care? Okay, it was Pisco's it's point, so I do want to go back to him, yeah. and then we're going to Turk. And Hutch, I got it's you down. It's a dumb assumption for Andrew to say low income people are the ones who are primarily going to be doing these purchases. It is true that uh, I think that, you, you know, with the $25,000 first home time buyer, um, a provision that's included as part of the plan that that might attract some people who would otherwise wouldn't be able to afford homes. But the whole point of Kamala's entire policy is to drive down. How Wait, so I was that? right. Please go. Hang on. But that is what people have been asking for is to make it affordable for people to own homes. Now, what oh, wait, so right, you said you would let hey, hey, what, I interrupted what, him. You can, what Andrew is saying is I don't want housing to become affordable for people. I don't want people to be able to purchase homes. And I think that policies that are crafted for that aim are stupid. I mean, uh, then uh, uh, say what you feel. And admit that what you you don't look at, really look at peace about, you don't point really care. We got to go. Hang on, you don't really care Wrap about up, people having access to affordable housing. No, you Turk, don't care. I want to go over to big Turk. cities and yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, so anyway, yeah, peace go. Here's well, the thing, though, man. Turk. Right? Is uh, you just made so Turk continue. Yeah, so I got a smart a smart Alec answer, and then I got a pushback on Pisco, and then I also wanted to kind of re. Uh, engage Pisco on the original claim of the quality of the debate. So first thing, the government has a really hard time actually defining things because infrastructure can mean a whole bunch of different things, but so can inflation. And if you went to the and heard the Joe Biden clip where he said the inflation, uh, of the inflation act or whatever should have been called something else for about the green energy. So that's that point. Then the second thing is um, what do you think happens to the costs of homes when the government artificially gives people money in order to buy homes? I think if you increase supply by three million and encourage first time owners, it'll I, I'm not sure about the net inflationary effect or the net uh, price effect on that. You, you know, I'm not an economist, so I couldn't tell you, but you're, okay. incre you're massively increasing supply. And yes, you are providing um, incentives for certain types of people to get so, housing. So yeah, I don't know. Low income people, low income people, like, so people very, Pisco. <laughs> like so I said, no, something. No, 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 no. Very, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no income, like I said, Pisco. Hang on, hang on a second. So is is it different in your mind, Andrew? First time home buyers and low income people are those things different? Yes or so no? So Andrew's. Are those things different? Yes or no, Andrew? Of course, there's a distinction okay. between the two. However, okay. however, okay. that that no, Pisco, it doesn't make your point. Yeah, so Pisco, the, the thing is, is that I can say there's a distinction between the two. What you're trying to draw in is people can't afford houses right now. People who can't afford houses right now are going to be people who don't have a lot of fuck money, right, Pisco? Um, not answer my question. Answer my question, please. Not Pisco. necessarily. Even oh, no, no, of course not. No, not they have tons of money. Even they have tons of money, not, Andrew. Not That's why they can't afford houses. Not, not, not necessarily. <laughs> as you're aware, Andrew, as you're aware, <laughs> as you're aware, even people who would be considered kind of middle income have been priced mm -hmm. out in some in certain places. Oh, yeah, they've been priced out. Where are they going to be? That's it. a good point, Pisco. Everybody's priced out. You can't even go buy food at the grocery store and they're worried about fucking housing prices. It's the most outrageous, ridiculous bullshit I've ever seen. You guys are offering solutions to problems. Oh, no, I'm out of touch. No, 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 I'm no, not out of touch. Listen, listen. They had a jobs report come back. It's eight hundred thousand less. If I took it to my stockholders and said, "Hey, we're going to make eight hundred thousand less this year than what was predicted," guess what? My stock prices would drop. It's the same thing here. They're lying, and, they're, and then they turn around and go, "Hey, we're going to give you this little consolation prize, housing, which probably won't even solve the problem." And secondly, it's such a drop in the bucket; it doesn't affect any of the real issues. It's total fucking bullshit. And you're over here even going, with that, so good. Even with they're that, so good, even these with cash. That even with that revision, Biden had stronger job numbers than uh, Trump did. Even if you uh, take away COVID losses and gains. Yeah, well, from, because everybody's going to work three jobs to buy have, fucking one thing of milk, bro. Like no, yeah, like, great, art, great right, argument, bro. Hutch. We, we devastated the economy. We <laughs> three jobs, we saved it, bro. Yeah, you made we, can't hear Rob, Rob. we can't hear you. Rob. Yeah. Jobs. I, there's too many people talking at the same time. I want to, I want to, I want to hear what Hutch said clearly. I know Turk never got the finished statement, so we will get Turk again. But he got half of his statement out, and there's a lot of people. I want to hear Hutch's he, point clearly, and we'll have one person respond, not three. It's a simple point. He made a point about how they revised the job numbers down, but even if you account for that. There were more jobs that were created on Biden's watch. Even if you get rid of uh, uh, the job losses during COVID and then the bounce back, the initial recovery. 
not true. So, if you're so ma- I'll respond if you're to this. Making a point about true. jobs. It's not true. We need so to first address off, that. Totally it's false. Not true. Just to just to it's reference the jobs. Anybody who's watching the, this right now, you can look it up yourselves. Just to overrun. reference the job numbers first, the vast majority of the jobs that have been created were jobs that were lost during COVID through disastrous policies, which I'll agree some Republicans and Trump went along with, but certainly were championed more by the Democrats. They're now taking credit for jobs that they let people go back to work. Second, full-time jobs are down tremendously, and many of these are part-time jobs because due to the Harris-Biden economy, people have to work multiple part-time jobs now to be able to do things. Third, the net number of jobs from citizens of this country or people born in this country have declined precipitously. Most of those jobs are going to people that were foreign born. And, and so that means most of those people would be ineligible to vote. That means when you're considering voting, knowing this, you and all the people you know that are eligible to vote are actually losing jobs. Fourth, jobs are hardly important if real wages are going down, which real wages have been going down precipitously under the harris Biden administration. Now, to talk about some of the other things that were said here specifically, when it comes to sort of housing, let me ask you this question, Peace. The same people that promised they were going to buy us, they were going to buy millions and millions or thousands of thousands of electrical vehicle stations and were spending hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars doing that. How many did they end up building? I'm not sure about that. I don't know how it's over. Okay, an- another question. Three. They also three, said, they, yeah, three, right, okay. Well, and they sure. also, they also spent- hey, Who's the same yeah. people? What, what do you mean by the same people? The Harris-Biden administration and the people okay. that are actually running Three's the show the by them. Section, section eight, let me ask you another question. When those same people also promised that they were gonna spend hundreds of millions of dollars for rural broadband, how many rural broadband people have been connected under that policy that spent hundreds of millions of dollars? I don't know off a hand, I don't know. The off-hand. answer is zero. The answer yeah, is zero to that. So what, what there's, Andrew- there's a lot of appropriations, are, are you denying the appropriations were were put towards public ends and the bipartisan infrastructure act or that there were uh, in, in great investments made under the um inflation reduction act are you denying I think that's deflect made? I think that's deflecting what the central question here the point that Andrew's trying to get to is it's easy to promise oh we're going to spend money that we're just going to create out of thin air to build a product that will benefit people but the problem is that that ends up causing inflation which we can see is already the core problem of the Harris Biden administration and second they rarely and brings down the- housing prices Rob remember that I was bringing down how is bringing down housing prices causing inflation? I would like to continue my point. And, and secondly, they rarely deliver on the promises that they've given anyway. So we end up with massive inflation and the promises that they delivered not coming through. Now, to the more central point, again, you can see from the opening statements from people like IRI that were shouting racism, talking about the cat story and things like that. Then you see from Pisco talking about threat to democracy January 6th, exactly as I said what happened in my opening statement. They know that despite the gaslighting that they've done, including decry- decrying people that correctly called out the cognitive decline of Joe Biden. The American people do not believe the Harris Biden administration when it comes to the important things such as the economy, such as immigration. And so they know that they have to deflect from talking about those things at any means possible. I'm sorry, the American people are not assuaged of their fears that Kamala has been there for three and a half years and their real wages have gone down and they can't afford food and they can't afford housing and their border is porous and their cities are being overrun with people that are breaking the law and taking their resources. And this administration has done nothing but exactly exacerbate that but it's all solved because she had 20 seconds of policy positions when she said we're going to give people free money and create houses we do need to get to other people rob we've done a lot of stuff years they failed to do we do need to get to other people game. this is a shell game what they're doing so andrew yeah. asked for a after pisco i do want to throw the iri because he hasn't really said much and andrew I want to asked sure for a specific chance. policy that's why we're in peace go be respectful let i talk come on what's wrong i said after i could go i said after pisco andrew so Andrew asked for a specific policy for well, like that we could talk about, and I offered one, and we were t- focusing on housing because that's where Andrew was taking the conversation. He wanted to get into the substance of the topics, and now Rob is decrying us and calling foul because we're focusing on that instead of Biden's cognitive decline. And yeah, that literally you, never happened. You, you, cannot, you cannot win. Andrew is decrying the fact that we're lowering housing prices, and Rob's talking about inflation and, and worrying about um, prices going up. Yeah, both up. are true at the same time. So in yeah, areas where the low-income people well, come in it's going to oh, lower yeah. the value of the house is around and it's also going to oh, cause inflation yeah, what i'm going to say so yeah i'm going to just finish what i'm going to say so it sounds like these are a couple no-win scenarios on the one hand you know we want to talk about policy because that's what andrew wanted to, to, uh, us to get into uh, but bo- obviously Rob wants to talk about underlying deceit and you can't trust his administration so pick what you want to talk about and we can go we can talk about all of it, Pisco. It's not a one. It's not a one or the other. It's not a bifurcation. We can talk about all of it. All of it's a package deal. So if you have low-income people coming into the suburban neighborhoods, it's going to necessarily lower the housing prices, which are in that area. Guarantee it happens nonstop. Okay, that is where you get the phenomenon called white flight. That's why that happens. 
Also, on top of that, it is going to um, increase inflation when you artificially increase the supply by 3 million homes. Pisco, both are true at the same time, Pisco. Increasing housing supply is going to increase inflation. Help me there. What's crazy? What's crazy? Wait, 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 I'm sorry. Where does the money come from? Peace come? I'm throwing it over to Where, IRI. Does, does the government talk. spend the money? Pisco? Throwing it over to yeah, IRI. Yeah. Wait, first, Andrew, there was a question to Pisco, so I now Pisco has to respond because you asked the question. So, Pisco. Yeah, so I understand that government expenditures um, can be inflationary in nature. No but, kidding. But, Let him finish. Hang on. You, if you're going to make a positive claim that there's a, a strong relationship or a good relationship, whatever you want to say between the policy proposed by uh, Harris, then and you have to make it. You know, like Trump's policy of tariffs, a 10% tariff across the board is also in principle inflationary. But don't you have to make a case? Don't you have to make a showing that it's going to noticeably increase more than the um, any kind of countering effects uh, that uh, you know other kinds? Well, of I mean, that was a nice. So what about it? Increases, it doesn't answer my question. Or increases in taxes. You know, I, I'm not sure that it's going to noticeably increase inflation. I'm not sure about that. You're, that's your case. You have to make. I write. Well, well peace go. Can we start? I write. Then? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm I'm tired, right. Right. Sorry. He hasn't spoken I, at all. I have to say, Andrew, I my feelings are hurt for you to call me a liberal scumbag. I thought we were cool. I still love you, but that's okay. That <laughs> nice said, to see you again, IRI. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I uh, noticed your yeah, anti-Semitic more remarks you made towards Laura Loomer. That wasn't very nice, IRI. Well, I'm Jewish, so it's kind of hard for me to be anti-Semitic, but okay. And his idea is um, his family, you know? That, but I'm happy for your success. I you've been doing great, so I'm happy for you. Um, as far as the um, the jobs go, there are five million more jobs in America today than February 2020 before the pandemic. And you guys said these are because people have three jobs. But the thing is, we've had a record unemployment rate. It's been below four percent, or it was below four percent for a record stretch we haven't seen since the 60s. We hit record unemployment, 3.4 percent below even what Trump accomplished. So I feel like a lot more people in this country are employed, and this isn't the case that you guys portray. Everybody's got a part-time job. Everybody yeah. does have a part-time job, bro. I like. I, I this was crazy. It's five percent of the workforce. It's well, then that's wrong. Everybody's got a part-time gig, a side gig, a side of. Yeah, I don't believe your numbers, even if you show them to me. I know too many people in my everyday no, life, even if it's anecdotal. You could just go ask anybody. Wait, Everybody's got to do two things. Why do you not? Everybody has to. Because you can go, you can go ask piece. ten random people at HEB or Walmart or wherever, and they all will tell you they're doing two things. And there's no way it's that this sample is anecdotal, dude. Sure, it's anecdotal, but when it's every time, every time, every time you know, books, listen, you, we've already caught you caught cooking the books and the job numbers. Why would I believe you with this five percent bullshit? You understand? I mean, you understand it's the clear that y'all are lying. Y'all lied about Biden. Y'all lied about Biden. Y'all every time y'all say Kamala's got a policy, half the time it's just Trump's policies. Listen. It sounds like you got two halves of nothing. And when I, what basically that equals out to is a whole lot of nothing. And y'all are sitting here just trying to pass off vagaries and nebulous policy and buzzwords like opportunity economy and say we're going to fix it. Well, you know, Trump asked a valiant question. Hey, three and a half years, y'all ain't done shit. And it's only got worse. Why, why has it, uh, it been fixed since then? Uh, and, and nobody's been able to answer that here. Y'all just keep saying, oh. Who, does anybody want to answer that housing. question? Wait, I, I would like to ask, what what is your guys' solution for the housing crisis? Because I well, know before before you it, skip it over to like the what about, can you well, answer his question? Well, 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 why haven't you fixed everything? Run, for years? Is, that, is that the question? Yeah, no, so his, had, his question first his question is peaceful trans. First time we didn't have a transition with the previous oh. administration donald oh, okay. trump took a giant dump on the floor on our and, mm. and set everything up for disaster so they had to do a little bit of cleanup work the last time <laughs> oh, hang on hang on let him finish wait 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 wait, 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 wait. Gibbs, Gibbs got to finish ira gets to finish let me finish the whole world has been suffering through economic problems this is not an american-centric thing so we've done pretty well compared to the rest of the world we sure have. And and what's more, in two years, we've only had Congress for two years. And those two years, there was a ton of bipartisan legislation passed. The CHIPS Act, the Infrastructure Act, the, uh, you know, other kind of weird, like, you know, gun legislation that was bipartisan in nature. Y'all have had the we've presidency had... for 12 of the last 16 years, Pisco. Like, what do you mean? Like, y'all have been the leader of the free world, and it's been this dog shit for, like, all the whole time.
Why does this need to turn into a civics lesson? You understand that Congress is the one that passes. Oh, you're do a civics lesson? Oh, you know what right? executive orders are? Like, yeah, I mean, you act like they don't have any control. Hang on. When, 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 when we try to do, when, 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 we try time, to do wait, major, wait, when we try to do, when we try to do major executive action, for example, and you might not agree with underlying policy, but uh, Biden made a promise with uh, with student loan, and you might say that that's stupid or whatever. But when the administration tries to do stuff, who are the f first people suing? It's Republican governors, Republican individuals. Hey. They're trying to stop as much as they can the administrative. Great, great. Because they don't put anything on Trump's feet. If it's all due to Congress, Bisco. If it's all Congress, then don't put it on Trump's feet. In fact, that's not to say the president doesn't have a lot of power. They do. No, oh, now he has a lot of power. Ten yeah. seconds ago, oh, he he's barely in, anything to do with anything. Turn, now suddenly has a lot of power. And, and just lie again. I just got a source it, it, saying that fifty-four percent of Americans are doing science Let's let Pisco so finish. Lying. I just let lying. In terms of the economy, the presidency can obviously, I guess, in terms of chain, uh, chain of command, you have the Federal Reserve there, which has a lot of influence on prices, that kind of thing. But in terms of direct appropriations and kind of major legislation, tax changes, that's all coming through Congress. The president has some role in, in what they can do with the administrative state, but that's all things that you guys don't agree Man, with. Man, are you tired from backpedaling, Pisco? Uh, uh, and there's no backpedaling whatsoever. Oh, total backpedaling. So ten the, seconds ago. Ten years, seconds ago. Top, the, the prisoner has that's almost no like power. You got like skinny oh. tongue, ice, Papa. That's what you're doing. Uh, you, you guys are asking. You, you guys are asking. For example, why haven't they done the, the housing thing in the four okay. years? They haven't had Congress. Okay. I know there's a Rob, lot. Rob, I know. I know you've been waiting. Rob, it's Rob, it's Rob it's guys, on, wait, guys, get, please, please, one second. I know, Rob, you want to talk, but. uh Turk has been waiting and Joe has been waiting very patiently. I have you after them. I just wanted to make sure I check with them. Turk, were you still waiting or has the moment passed? It, uh, I, I can still bring it back to the topic that you brought up, Dylan, if you'd like me to do that. If Could you, I do Joe like. first because it might be relevant? Sure, yeah. Joe? Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, Pisco, for having to push at you too. <laughs> um, a little frustration that I do have with the Biden Harris administration and then by extension now the Harris administration and Rob brought this out a little bit in his argumentation is that there are still issues within underserved communities that haven't been actualized and promised and something that I wish was clearly articulated in the Harris administration would be something like to get very sort of specific we saw in New Jersey about a drop in monthly revenue from hospitals across the board, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent. And that's a little bit higher in more underserved areas like Camden and Newark. And something that my um, the person that I voted for for the Senate, Larry Hamm, was advocating for was an expansion of the infrastructure bill to cover things like emergency centers and hospitals, which is, an, which is something currently doesn't exist in the infrastructure bill as currently. So that's a, that's a frustration that I have with the Harris administration. And if we want to get really specific in the ideas of- Biden administration, you mean? In the, what did I say? What's Harris, the Harris, Harris administration? In the Biden experience. Oh, look at that slip. <laughs> yeah, it's really um, difficult to differentiate the two nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that, that's not considered he's on the beach every day, you know, that's not the hero there in the misbeak. But my concern there is that there are things that could help. And I think it is legitimate to question the three million houses plan. As if a, I may, if I may jump in, because I do have something to add on this specific point. So to the can points finish, that were addressed can I, can here, I finish my, can I finish my house thing and then I'll end the plan of golf? See, Rob, is that all right? Or. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the thing is, like, we saw, for example, like, in the housing crisis, right, from for Black households, about 8% of Black households were lost during that from 2008. Something that I think could have been really cool to hear and see is an acknowledgement from whether it be the Biden administration or the Harris campaign articulating that because something that would be cool to have coupled along with that is in those sort of first buyer initiatives and stuff like that to include individuals who lost their home during those foreclosures for people with subprime mortgages. That I think would be a very easy rhetorical thing that could move a lot of people in the center. A lot of people in the center probably were affected by that statistically, which obviously would have an impact of for black voters in particular, but also to all voters who were affected by that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let Rob, um, I, I have yeah, a response, it, but it, I just wanna let Rob talk. It, oh, for sure, uh, so, uh, I screwed stuff up. Uh, okay, to respond to this first, I wanna go, uh, where I'll get to write to what Joe said there, sort of in the spirit of it. But notice how in all of this talk about jobs, I could talk about the specific job numbers. Yes, unemployment numbers look like they're doing okay. That's because it doesn't count people that are no longer trying to get work. Labor force participation is still lower than it was in pre-tandemic levels. What happened was a lot of people got so frustrated after the lockdowns and things like that that they never tried to go back to work. In addition to increased welfare benefits and PPP loans and other stimulus checks that we're sending them, many people never went back to work. So 
though unemployment numbers look way better than they actually are, the real unemployment number is probably around 7%. And none of that matters anyways. The fact that you have to work multiple jobs and we count each of those multiple jobs as a job, but people still real wage growth is barely moving the needle since the Harris-Biden administration were under Trump. It was going up by leaps and bounds. So people know, and that's why all the polling shows that people feel they were economically better under the Trump administration than under the Harris-Biden administration, which is why what I said, which Pisco deflected from was, no one wants to talk about that. Instead, you'll talk about one random policy. Oh, they're going to spend money and build houses. That's it. And the rest of it will be, as you've seen IRI try to do here, make excuses that in the first term, congressional term, when Harris and Biden were there, where they controlled the House and had the tiebreaker in the Senate, they didn't do any of this shit. And what's IRI's response to that? Well, that's because Trump didn't have a peaceful transition of power. Exactly. What they're trying to do is cover for Harris, which is why she's not out there talking to the American people, talking to adversarial press. She's hiding, just like Biden hid, because they can't defend their record. And to the extent that they're trying to come up with policies, most of it's just cribbing things Republicans and Trump have said, to the point where even Joe Lewis correctly points out he's frustrated as a lefty that Harris is actually on stage talking about how she supports gun rights. They always become more Republican because they understand that their policies will not get them elected, which is why Bernie Sanders said the other day, oh, in reality, what's going on is Harris has to say what she needs to say to get elected. Exactly. That's how bad she is. She's a chameleon. It's ran by people behind her. She's not really doing anything. So the question I have for Pisco to pivot off what Joe's saying is, one, when Harris was there and was basically running the show because Biden had dementia, which you and all of the Democrats covered up for because you're liars that don't care about democracy, why didn't she do any of these policies like create massive amounts of hobs, right. uh, houses? Why did the policies that they pushed through end up leading to massive inflation? Why did they lie to people over and over again and say actually the economy is great when people were struggling miserably? And even if they couldn't have got it done through Congress in the past two years, I disagree with that because they basically got everything they wanted in the Inflation Reduction Act, which was basically Green New Deal light, as Joe Biden admitted the other day. And lastly, they tried to push through shit and uh, congressional or executive orders that they knew would be overturned like the bailouts of student loans. So why didn't they try executive orders to build housing and to reduce inflation? The truth is because they didn't give a shit, just like they lie to, maybe you'll appreciate this, Joe, black Americans every election year. For two years, they don't give a shit about black Americans until it's an election year, and then all of a sudden they pretend to give a shit. They don't care about people in rural America, and then all of a sudden they pretend to give a shit. Why didn't they do these amazing things? None of you have an answer. The Democrats were in charge, Harris was in charge, and she Trump. didn't do shit. She so, so nice question, Rob. That was an extensive question, and I don't just want to throw it to Pisco because I, I want to throw it to other people said. too. But one moment, I do also want to say, if you want to ask questions to anybody on the panel or the panel itself, donate your questions, put a message, and the highest ones will get read. We're shilling here. I, uh, I, I, I just send that to BPS chat. His chat crazy. Think about the oh, donating listen. and say some crazy questions. I, it's an interesting no point slurs. to me that you guys are want to pick a fight on policy when it came to the debate. What policies did Trump articulate during that debate besides Wait, tariffs, are you surprised? Are you surprised? Let's, let's, let's let IRI finish. But Rob went for a bit. I, I want to hear an extended what response. Him. Are we doing what about us? I want to answer Rob's question. advocate a nonsense. <laughs> If you uh, want to the question, he, he, he asked a question. Can he answer to it? Legislation passed. Guy, Biden got way more legislation passed during his first two years than Trump did. The very first thing that Trump tried to do when he was president was repeal and replace the, uh, Obamacare. He failed. The next thing he did was the tax cuts that the Republicans had been clamoring to do for decades. And then what did he get done after that? What were his I major mean, signature pieces of legislation? You I really want to this, compare the legislative yes, track yes. record between Biden yes. and Trump? Yeah, give me okay, 30 seconds. And I'll, okay, give me 30 seconds. I'll answer this. Because what sure. Kamala Harris is running on is being an agent of change. What you can't get around is the American people know that economically and security wise, they were better off under a Trump administration than a Harris administration. So what's happening is the Harris administration is trying to run on. We're the agents of change. Things will be different. To why I say then, then why if she's been there in charge for four years, haven't they done any of these things? You then charge, respond, let me finish. You respond with, but they actually got a lot of shit done. They actually got to do a lot of what they wanted. Exactly. And the American people are not happy with it. So then your counter argument, which is, well, they couldn't get things done that they wanted done, but this time they will, is bullshit. As you're admitting, they did get a ton legislatively done, and America has given it the thumbs down. Why did we have a historically oh good midterm? Why did we expand our majority in the Senate during an economic downturn? 
Why did we make one, Trump a one-term president the first since George H.W. Bush? Bush, if your leadership because and of Trump's abortion, leadership and your policies of were so popular— issue. It's because of social you, issues. It has nothing to do with the economy, which is an economic disaster. downturn. It should have been a disaster. bloodbath. Right. No, what you guys are saying, no. you guys are no. saying is that your policies are people not popular. Knew. No, hey, Andrew, knew can I just people Andrew, knew that Trump's Andrew. economy got shut down. They knew it. Andrew, that it mic, got shut down when they were thriving. Of a pandemic. Andrew, I just quick thing. Your mic keeps like, peaking blood. when you when you talk. It like peaks and it peaks and it's kind of hard to hear you. I'm just letting you know. Uh, Pisco, you wanted to go? Yeah, yeah. I want to answer to Rob's cavalcade of nonsense earlier, and so oh. he started off by he and started too, off please. by saying he uh, he started off by saying, and can we have quiet in the peanut gallery, Andrea? Like, I don't know why you feel the need every two seconds. I think like you're scared of when I talk because you only interrupt me. I mean, is it going to be a problem? I just when, okay. You were talking, dummy. All right, right. So first of all, he starts by the assumption that we are not okay with speaking about the general economic policy of Harris and Biden, respectively, in terms of what their administration has done. We absolutely are willing to talk about it. We are talking, we were specifically talking about one policy because that's what Andrew asked us. He asked us to talk about one policy, but you think that we're dodging something. We're dodging the, the general economic character of what's been going on. We do not shy away from the fact that over the course what's, of the what's last four years, economy? Uh, the, over the, I haven't mentioned the word opportunity economy at all. Well, we're have, talking have about the heard, debate, right? Have you heard me? I mean, no, no, we're talking about the leadership economy. of the country. We're, we're talking about the, the leadership of this country. Yeah, we are. And who's better positioned to do it? And based oh. on the previous well, we administration, are. We, we've right? Moved on. We've moved well, on. I want to, I want to hear the end of Pisco's statement, and then you yeah, can talk. So, also, so, Turk, I have you written down. Eventually, I will bring it back to you. So he asked, why haven't he done all these things in four years? It's an absolutely sound answer that um, IRI gave that, first of all, we were cleaning up a mess. We were in the middle of a COVID pandemic, and it was a crisis. The first thing that the Biden administration did was pass a recovery act. You could say it's inflationary, but, but uh, you know, you look at economic analysis after the fact, they don't attribute it, uh, you know, the, the inflationary uh, effect of that policy or other policies uh, to those specific pieces of legislation. In fact, it's a global inflation crisis that is facing the entire world. And as IRI or Hutch, I think, pointed out, America, relatively speaking, has recovered better than the other G7 countries, better than the other advanced economies. Um, we got a shit ton of legislation passed that re specifically relates to the economy, whether that's the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Act, which will absolutely benefit the economy in the future, and other pieces of legislation. I'm willing to fight and defend this administration for what it stood for and what it got done. You point to the fact that you know, there are bad polls. Trump had bad polls in his term. If we just look to polls to determine or the general trend of the economy in this kind of correlation equals causation analysis, I mean, that would be a, a, a great way to defend like the policies of George Bush in, in, during the right before the Great Recession. Right. You have to look more uh, than just how the economy generally was doing or what people think about it generally and look to the policies themselves and what the likely effects of them. Yeah, were. I and think we're going to say me, and, election and as to the line and as to the line point is about there any, is it, there any it, more is not, time we can give you peace. Go the last point I'll make the last point. I'll last make point. Is no Gibbs think, wanted to respond. No thinking person thinks that. Kamala Harris was in charge of the administration for the past three or four years. That's pure fantasy. If you read any of the reports of the insiders of who's operating things behind the scenes or, or whether Joe Biden was in charge of the first few years, no one is saying that Kamala Harris is running the show. If I may, yes. real quick, just to respond yeah, to that I'd love point to get real in there quick. Gibbs, do you care if, uh, if they take from you? It was your, you were next. It was your uh, back I mean, forth. Rob, if it's quick, I want to I want to get in here, Rob. Quick but you, you, uh, yeah. Harris herself has said of many of these issues, she was the last person in the room. And my statement is Harris is just like Biden is an empty suit that people behind the scenes will be running. The same people behind the scenes running the Biden economy or administration will be running hers. So the yeah. same people that will be in charge under Harris will be Those in charge people. there. The American people have rejected. And the data shows that that economic data is a business. Not only that, you can but all you want, but that's people, the truth. But people are oh, going right now. Hang on. I'm all, hang on real quick. All right. And then I'll turn it right over. But right now, people are experiencing high gas prices, high grocery prices, their day-to-day -day living, right? Expenses have shot through the roof and you're moving into this election promising them, well, in the future, it'll be better when under Trump, it already was better. So it's easy for people when they're moving into the voting booth in order to, for uh, Republicans to point this out. And that's what people are talking about. That's what all the buzz is. Yeah, I mean, I don't even want to jump in, right uh, Gibbs, but we had two righties. We have to have a lefty response, and then I'll throw it back to you, Gibbs. I'm sorry, but there oh, has to be a balance. I just want to ask my conservative uh, panel people, like, if, if everything that you're saying right now, that, that Biden's presidency has just been this disaster for everybody, why isn't he up 10 points right now?
Gibbs, because you want to respond to that? Why did off you, of the he, he, was, he was dominating against Biden. Like, you know, and a part of what Kamala is doing he's is not now. To, Why is well, he okay, being he's going against Kamala points. now, right? Everybody's so cool, miserable, she's, right? Because she's not Biden. I mean, here's the thing. The Republicans and a lot of, like, average people are looking at this as like, the age-old expression. A burning hand is better than two in the bush, right? They know what they got with Trump. They don't know what they're getting with Kamala. It's a whole lot of nothing. You know, they we know y'all been lying to us the whole time. The jobs report, it was lying. You literally just lied on this panel and said only 5% of people have side jobs. It's According to Market Watch, as of April 16th, 54%, 54% of people have side gigs. That's a lot more than 5%, Papa. I'm sorry. Y'all are just lying. That, that yeah, Market Watch, I can post it. Right. I got it. Yeah, Market Watch, I got it. I got the link if you need it. I knew people were going to ask for sources. Papa Gibbs came ready. Secondly, if we go back to my notes here, you know, y'all threw a de facto coup after y'all told us, hey, for months, years, Biden was fine. And y'all took Biden down quicker than a whore on nickel night. That motherfucker was stuck in out of there so fast. I've never Dropped seen him. Like a prom like, dress. Oh, Drop him like a prom dress. He's he's literally on the election, election, he, and he, he's, he's literally on the beach. And we pressured him out, and now our current candidate is leading the election. And it was oh, based. I'm glad we did it. It was good. It was not anti-democratic. Your guy tried to speak. Wait, I can't wait. Just three. Wait, stop, stop, guys, guys. There's three people talking at the same time. Gibbs. Gibbs. The entire. Wait, 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 wait. Gibbs, I'll give you 15 more seconds. Then we'll have a lefty respond, and I'm throwing over to Turk because Turk is gonna cry. I, I can he's see the pain on his face. He's literally he's on the beach patient. sitting here drinking Mai Tais. Whenever we look at Trump, when he left office, inflation 1.9%. It went up 9% in the first year Biden went up, and it's gone skyrocketed since then. It's been dog across shit the ever world, since you took Biden. Across the the world. World. Wait, wait, wait. Why, why did it go oh. up around the world then? Why did inflation go up around Are the world? Are we the superpower? responsible for that? Yeah, we're the superpower. Oh, could it, be, oh, could oh, it have oh, something oh, to do oh, with the world reserve currency being the dollar? I mean, yeah, have anything to do with that? You think it's the world reserve currency? That's that's why everyone. What is everyone... the lingua franca? Yeah. 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 Right? I mean, I don't know. Why is it that inflation grew across Bro. the world? Andrew, go ahead. Bro, the re or, inflate. Of course, American policies and American economics are going to affect so inflation. Answer the question. All answer over, the question. So, well, I just did. I just American answered it. Money, which policies? not enough good. They don't like which your answer, so it's not going to count. Which, which, yeah, policy? No, which no policy? American policies? Which Wait, policies? Andrew, can I just ask? Do you American believe policies? Which policies? I just wanted to get a clarification. Which policy? It's not Philip. Can you let can you let the mob bake for ten seconds? This ain't the let, whatever wait, podcast. Why don't you answer which policy? Okay, wait, wait. Okay, Bro. let's let's stop for a second. Bro, I, Andrew, is it your I, show? I, I wanted to look, Andrew. What do you think caused the inflation crisis uh, globally? And then we're going to no, no, which policies? Which policies led yeah, to that? So I would say mm -hmm. that the Federal Reserve. Uh, and the policies the Fed has, which has inflated the currency artificially, and the reason that they did this is because they needed to pump billions of dollars out into the economy for all these social relief programs, has caused not only inflation in the United States, but has been extended to our neighbors as well, especially who anybody the CARES who Act into law? Bro, bro, you going to let me finish? Who signed the CARES Act into law? Are you going to let me finish, Hutch? Sure we'll, that? We'll, you gonna, you we got to give Trump? Andrew some time to respond quick. Yeah, let me finish, Hutch. Yeah, so I would I would say that that was one of the primary reasons. And if you say, well, wait, bro, stop talking so I can finish my point. Remember how you were just bitching five seconds ago that I kept yeah. cutting you off even when I wasn't cutting you off? Yeah, you're all you cutting each other the, off yeah, the all the time. Reserve, I wasn't, you didn't remember I wasn't the cutting you off. Did, and, and think, wait, 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 wait. We're, we're, this I is just taking did, too much time did. than they need to. Andrew, finish the question literally quickly. Did. Why do you think you saw everybody nodding their head? They totally agree with me. So on top of this, peace go, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, they they pumped it in. Now, is Donald Trump responsible they for some of this policy? In. Yes. He, what, do you mean well, they, what do you mean the Federal Reserve? Literally literally said, said, wait, can we let him finish? Bro, okay, let, let him finish. Bro. Again, calm down, Pisco. Yes, Fed policy led to massive inflation. Yes, Pisco, because the United States government was pumping billions of dollars artificially in order to take care of this relief act. Now, you can say that, oh, that's Trump's fault. That was passed by on an under by a bipartisan agenda. All sorts of people wanted this. All sorts of special interest groups wanted this. Now, Absent C-19 and the lockdowns, Trump's economy was fucking roaring. And you have only just now successfully pivoted away again from the point that you have not addressed what Kamala Harris's policies are going to be to lower gas prices, lower food prices, lower the inflation rates, or any of these. You just say, well, you're going to build 3 million new homes. Yay, Peace Go. Can you answer yeah, any so, the questions so you which have been Federal asked Reserve, to you? When you, say, when you say the Federal Reserve pumped it up, are you saying lowered uh, interest rates? No, no, peace go. What, what do you mean by pump? You what did the Federal Reserve do? I'm going to explain. Say, yeah, no, then let me explain. If you increase the money supply, you inflate the money supply. 
right? How do they, do you agree? How did they increase the money supply? Bro, are you, a, answer my question first. I agree that that right. So if the United States government, the so if the United States government calls for billions of dollars from the Fed and to, to, for the Fed to from print the, billions, Fed. it's going to increase the money supply, thus increase inflation. This is basic Pisco. Well, does the Federal Reserve make appropriations? Who makes appropriations? That would be uh, Congress. Okay, so the Federal Reserve didn't do shit that you're pointing to. What you're pointing to are acts of Congress, isn't it? Not Federal Reserve policy. No, 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 that's, no, no. Not, so, that's not all no. that happens, as you know, Pete. No, so, so the M2 wait, 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 money. Go ahead. Bro. The, bro. Do you want me to answer real quick? Yeah, the M2 I'm, money I'm, supply. The M2 money needs supply to be able to. Went, okay, the M2 money supply that went up 50% is from the Federal Reserve. That means the Federal Reserve increased the amount of dollars in circulation by about 50% since like 2020. Is what you're really trying to tell me is not one dollar of that creation was except what Congress told them they had to do in specific bills? Is that your what, argument? What, what I am saying is the Federal Reserve to increase the money supply typically will lower interest rates. That's how Fed policy works. When you're talking about uh, taking out loans, the government sells things called bonds. These are this Lowering is interest rates okay? increases is, the money supply, Pisco, and if yeah, it increases so, the Money supply creates inflation, peace go. Yeah, but, you, but you didn't point to You lower fucking it. idiot. On, I just right. explained this to you five times, you fucking Andrew, moron. Andrew, you sound really upset right now. You God, what a dummy. You, you did not I literally to, just explained you this did to not you. Point to, you did not point to Federal Reserve policy just then. What you did. I literally just did. You're banging peace on go. the table. Well, you're banging on the table because I peace probably go. told peace you. Go. Peace go. Peace go. Oh, yeah. wow. Does that increase? I can't. He Does it increase the money supply? Does it increase? Does it increase the money supply when they lower the interest rate? The Federal Reserve is a central bank. You're not going to answer the question, right? The Federal Reserve is a central bank. It is not the one who is... Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. It sounds like you're having some central bank? I didn't know that. It sounds like you're having some difficulty, so I'm going to explain it to you, okay? Explain it. The Federal Reserve... The Federal Reserve doesn't like make appropriations or take out loans. The Nobody people who said take they out did, loans, go. Okay, the people who take out loans and, and <laughs> are the federal did. government, all right? So mm -hmm. when the Congress writes a law, an appropriation by law, they will need to fund it and they fund it through the Treasury. And if the Treasury wants to loan money or sorry, wants to borrow money, mm -hmm. they will issue bonds. The Federal yes. Reserve affects the money supply in different ways. So I'm asking you, Agreed. what Federal Reserve policy was causing the inflationary problem? So I'm going to tell you again for the yeah. 14th time, if the Fed lowers the interest rates it's going to increase the money supply okay so who and is peace go my turn peace go peace go my turn peace go peace go stop talking peace go okay it's my turn okay okay wait wait stop okay wait we're gonna we're pausing this wait wait i'm gonna meet you both 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 okay Andrew, you got 20 seconds. Pisco, you got 20 seconds. Then everybody else gets to talk because okay, I think everybody's so sick of hearing about I want my last okay. question. I want my last question. Yeah, yeah. That's nice, Pisco. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. Both. Okay. You're still spurging, Pisco. Okay. I'm muting you both. This is the order. This is how it's going to go. Pisco, you got 10 seconds to ask a question and 10 seconds to say whatever else you want to say. Andrew, then you get 10 seconds after and 10 seconds after that. If anything else is said that's like, oh my God, I want to respond to that, it'll have to be somebody else. It'll just have to be somebody else because Turk wants to talk. Okay. Andrew just said that the Fed policy. Why did you just let him filibuster? What? what? He, he just gave me the. He just, Why? He you just, just. I was in the middle of my answer. Gonna, you let the guy filibuster. I, I, was, it, I'm sorry. It's chaos. You're no, going to no, have to no, work no, with no, it. Work with it. Work with it. Work with it, Andrew. Work with it. Work with it. He's going to ask a question. Then you're going to respond. It just said you're going to be able to respond, Andrew. Let me respond. You're going to respond after. You're going to respond after. You're not debating the moderator. Either deal with the root. You got to deal with the order because this is chaos. Okay. You're both dominating. There's six other guests. I got to think about the audience. I, I got to think about the other people. He's going to get 20 seconds. Then you'll be able to respond. You'll be able to talk, Andrew. And you'll yeah, be talking ahead. more That's than everybody else still. Pisco, go. Andrew just pointed to the Federal Reserve policy of lowering interest rates as the cause for global inflation. And he knows now, and that's why he's trying to stop me from talking, that who was pushing for the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates in the lead up to the election was none other than Donald J. Trump. That's my statement. He can talk. Andrew. Yeah, so again, you can if you increase the amount of money supply, when you lower the corporate tax, that's good. You want them to borrow tons and tons and tons of money. You want tons of printing when it's be, the influx is going to corporations which are going to expand. That's an ROI. That's a return on investment. You want that. Under Biden, that was a, this is a totally different situation. He uh, did exactly the opposite. He has been strangling corporations of much needed money. So has the entire administration. So what all you're doing, Pisco, you're just shifting the goalpost again. I knew exactly what you were going to say. I was happy to respond to it before you ever even said it. Turk. So this exchange in the debate is a prime example of what happened in the debate that happened the other night. 
people kept going to the past and Trump's policies and why Trump and Orange Man are bad instead of actually going and asking the different people on the stage pointed questions about their specific plan going into 2024. Pisco, I wanted to talk to you, but I don't want to hear your voice or Andrew's anymore. I want to ask the panel, do we feel like we got to learn more about Kamala Harris's actual uh, preferred policies and some of the details? Because like Joe mentioned earlier, there's a lot of things that wasn't done in the previous administration. She wasn't really pressed on some of the the guts of her proposals. So it's like, do we really feel like both of the candidates were questioned adequately about their current proposals going into 2024? Yeah, yeah, it, Chuck, it nobody answered my policy. question earlier about opportunity economy. No one was able to define that. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to hear your answer. Well, she answers. defined it with three, with different policies, like expanding the child oh. tax credit to twenty five thousand dollars grant for first time home buyers. So, so again, the my earned, question is not what is the, the high level policy. Tax Sorry, there's there's two people Harris. talking at once. One second, I it's Turk's question, but there was something there. I'm gonna let finish, and we'll throw it back to Turk. Uh, Hutch, you were responding to Gibbs. Yeah, the child tax credit, which has been a Republican like uh, policy for why I don't know as long as I've been alive. Republicans block it from being permanent. Why? They blocked it in the Senate from being permanent. Oh, strategically, bro. Like, like I mean, like all like, sorts of shit. Like, it a Republican policy. Democrats it's been a Republican policy. Trying... She just picked it up, just like she picked up the why no tax on tips, just like she's put the... Trump's border plan, border uh, okay. wall in her ads. She has no well, real plans. She just listens well, to what people like trends. That policy and she for the record, it. anybody can look that up. So oh, this oh, yeah, is just a like discussion. This is total bullshit. Just like the yeah, it's not answering the question yet. You asked. He didn't answer the question I asked. He's over here just lying. When Donald Trump was asked about his health care policy. He said he had the a concept of a plan. Wow, and, and was, you have zero plan. Of, He's that in options. Of, that's not even not true. He answered that he used what was already in place. I have play. ever heard a candidate give on a, on a debate. Oh, state. my you're God. A you're just candidate. You're misrepresenting and you say, say you have a concept of a plan? Turk, I can that answer that at some point. And you guys want to make this Turk. about policy? So Literally nothing worse than anything I've ever said. So that's the soundbite that everyone's running with. If you go back 30 seconds, a minute to that right. entire stretch oh. of questioning, he goes and says, we're not going to replace it unless we can get a bill that is cheaper and it has better coverage than the current plan. He, he you doesn't have any listen to his I don't know you why you listen to the soundbite. No, I did, but it, it's his job plan to pitch no, a plan. you didn't hear it. You listened to I the soundbite. If I may, yeah. he says, I'm not going to replace it Wait. unless there's a more detailed plan. It's Kirk. his job as a candidate to articulate a plan. Kirk, I don't if know I how may. they can answer your question, Gibbs, if I may. Right. So to answer that question, what he's saying is he has concepts, but in the confines of this, as I think we'll all agree, not even the best of debaters can articulate a well thought out, complicated policy in a platform like this. And so what he's giving is a general answer, just like Kamala Harris constantly oh. gave general answers. Uh, so he said, look, we're not going Wait. to replace what's there unless we have a bill there. Wait. We have a concept. So they have concepts such as they want the free market more involved Rob. and things like that. If I may, I'll finish. I'm trying to okay. not interrupt right. anyone. One. So okay. I don't think I've interrupted anyone. So I'm, I'm trying to hope I get the That's same true. courtesy. Um, when we're talking about specifically with Kamala Harris is this debate was for different things for different people. And you may like that or not like it, but it is the truth. Trump wanted to do things like not come off as unhinged or pin Kamala Harris down on what she actually stands for. I think that he ultimately lost the debate because he failed to do some of those things. So your criticisms of him not putting out policies, that wasn't really what he needed to do for two reasons. One, because we could already see what the track record of a Trump administration would be. And despite what you people are going to try to say, and it's going to be avoided over and over through this debate, I challenge, I hope we could all agree that the, the election should just be a referendum of, do you think the economy and the border was better under Trump or under the Harris-Biden administration? Uh, no matter what you try to say that, oh, but she's going to do all this new stuff. She's been there. Her people have been there for three and a half years. They haven't done any of this. That's number one. No. But second, he's already put out a bunch of policy plans as well. Kamala Harris has literally hid from the press, didn't have policies up on her very website until a day before the election. And those policies she put up was literally, literally the metadata showed just copied and pasted from Biden's policy, Rob, further proving Rob, she would just be an extension. Of, yeah, I, I promise that just let me finish this one last thing. So Kamala Harris, just because she said two or three things about policy and Trump didn't give a specific policy to your liking as much, it still doesn't t answer the effect that Kamala Harris has flip-flopped on every major policy description she had in 2020. And the 30-second soundbite that she said, we're going to build 3 million homes and give people $25,000, does nothing to rebut that. Okay, so can I ask, Trump's solution for the housing crisis is to drill, baby, drill, 
shut yes. the already shut down border and kick out 20 million migrants. The border's not shut down. That is a reason. No, the border's not shut down. Bring That's down the cost of, uh, do you th do you think okay, so what's his plan then? Okay, his well, border is the border's not shut down. Let's just get that line out of the way. Go ahead, sir. Well, why, Biden's executive so, order. Biden's executive how, order did how, shut down the border when it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Immigration is going up sixty two percent in every state. Hold on. I, I will immigration is going up sixty two percent in every state except for Texas, where Texas has implemented Operation Lone Star this uh, since two thousand one and has been dramatically successful despite the treasonous Biden Harris administration coming and trying to stop them from uh, you know enforcing Texas borders. So every okay, success okay. we've had on immigration has been despite yeah. uh, the impeding impediment of the Biden-Harris administration. If I may, wait, 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 no, I, I want to, IRI was the one talking, so I want to throw it back to IRI. Can, can and I want to I want to answer IRI's question. Okay, I will throw it to you I'd after. love to hear, to any yeah. of you conservatives tell yeah. us so what you, Trump's solution is to bring down the cost of housing. I ask you, do you know what drill baby drill means? <laughs> well, we're already second, setting a record for oil production at 13.3 million That's That is precisely oh, I, I can answer my, your question no, too. So Trump this is did, precisely, so Biden has proven that we can drill more under Biden than Trump. So what would Trump do to increase and oil what, production? And Biden's what happened once oil. we started yeah, increasing oil production? What? What happened when we started increasing oil production under Joe Biden? I don't, I don't we, know. The inflation rate oil, started we... to go down. The cost of transit of material, the cost of production of material reduced. There are several different economic factors that can be eliminated and are addressed by drill, baby, drill. But, and but, when Trump what, says, what I'm going to do that Trump even do? more, no, it's no, no. going to be even How more. How can we do more? We're setting a record uh, under Biden that we Trump was unable to do. Trump gave them the green light, and Biden broke the record. We're over 13 million barrels per day. And You're he's in a going fantasy to do land that we're going to do more. We're it's just going to be plenty, enough. There's it's there are how? plenty um, of oil how? reserves. There are plenty of oil reserves. We can go to more federal lands. We can unlock no. more and more offshore drilling. There is he plenty of oil to be extracted from our nation. He, he emptied our reserves to flood the market to drive the price down. You, you realize that when we just started, started, like, I, Wait, wait, wait I want to, I'm sorry. I just, wait, wait, wait. I, I didn't hear Hutch just say, I heard like the first three words from Hutch and then I heard nothing else. So Hutch, could you finish? He, well, he mentioned the oil reserves. You guys don't give Biden credit because we, he emptied our reserves, flooded the market and drove the cost of oil down. You well, said why did he, he do that? Started, that one more, one more After he stopped doing it. One more thing real quick. You say that when he started producing more oil, the cost of inflation went down. He started ramping up oil production right away. Do you guys understand no, that when that yes, was not he did. right? You away. can look at the graph. Yes, I'm, I can link it in the chat right here. There's a it domestic took crude oil production. A couple right of here. years for Joe Biden to finally start actually increasing oil capacity across That's the nation. Not, no, it's not true. All right, then here. send the link. Let's let let's talk it. about yes. the link. What's it's stopping just, inflation, what's lowering inflation, and what, what's brought us down to, to 2.5 inflation is the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. That is a contributing under, factor. Under I Joe agree. Biden, the Federal Reserve has had excellent policy raising interest rates to lower inflation. Under Donald Trump throughout his presidency, he was asking always to lower interest rates. That's the yeah. Yeah. Rob, yeah. I believe Rob's been waiting. Rob, you've been waiting, right, if I remember correctly? So what do you oh, want yes, to throw I've been uh, just, the, It's not just inflation isn't just about interest rates. Lowering interest rates itself it doesn't create additional dollars. The problem is the policies that were largely that I am fully throwing in all the frontiers. I said that the lowering, man, peace guy. It increases really the money supply. Let me become one one. I don't know what I have to say. It's not yeah, economy. No, it's it's not economy one one. Right? It's no. no, it is not economy one on one. I guess I'll have to explain this slowly for peace go. Peace go. Is your argument that the act of lowering interest rates simultaneously by de facto creates additional dollars? Yes. Yeah, that is incorrect. What happens is there is no connection whatsoever from lowering rates to the creation of dollars. Those are two separate policies. Many times what happens is as follows. Interest rates are lowered, which means that people are more likely to borrow money. Then once people start borrowing money, the Fed will decide that, oh, now that there's more money in circulation, we need more money. Therefore, they create more dollars. So you are fundamentally incorrect in what you're saying. The no. reason that inflation occurred and that dollars were 
were being printed was because Republicans, including Trump, supported disastrous lockdown policies under COVID. And you can criticize Trump for that, and he should be criticized. Unfortunately for you all, the Democrats and people like Harris and Biden wanted to do it way worse, which me and they continued to do things way worse, even once you had a Harris-Biden administration, which I mean our economy. Now, the Any question I want to will tell you that lower interest rates increases the money supply. That is a relationship that is well known. It doesn't have to do with go. the physical printing please of go. money. That everything else is coped. That's not you, you, the fact that you don't fundamentally understand how it works, and you're saying one necessarily leads to another is different than the answer you gave me that it is the same thing. Lowering rates is the direct. Yeah, that's true. Thing. No, no, hang on. That is true. So you it does lead. It does it, lead it, to. It, it, it does lead to more dollars. borrowing. Yes. Yes, which would, well, then it lead to more dollars. I agree with that. But Rob is right that you said that all that just lowering the interest rate by itself does it doesn't. They still have to borrow the money, Pisco. Oh my God! Right. Wait, so so are are you suggesting to me that there has ever been a situation in our history where the lowering of interest rates has no, not Pisco, been? Pisco, he was just correcting with, you. That's all. What's what's the correction? In fact, that, so well, the correction said, is that you said by itself, by itself, it does that. It doesn't. You stop to borrow the money. Is what he's saying. Okay, yes. does, print, does, does printing the money increase the money supply? Yes. Yes. But wait, no, you still have to hand out the money, right? You still need to move no, the money sure. to a place. You still need to works, have it in circulation. No, no, no. you don't. Well, if, you you more, you got, if you put more money, you have more money whether you hand it out or not. Because you got blown the hell out, Andrew, not, on the other question of interest. It, nobody, it no, you've never blown you anybody out, Pisco, ever in your life. Oh, I just did. Oh, I just did. never did. Oh, I just did. Everybody, everybody, I got to say, everybody, everybody is very wrecked. Everybody is very pwned and owned in all types of pwned. Just Pisco. Um, everybody, in fact, including me, mm -hmm. uh, there are people who have been waiting. So I do want to throw to them. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to uh, just derail. Uh, I just want Rob to finish up. And Thank we'll you. have we'll have one response, and then we got to go to Gibbs and IRI who have been waiting patiently. Okay. I, there's plenty more to say in inflation. Uh, just to say that under Biden it was way worse. Everyone knows that they're trying to fudge the numbers. People don't want to talk about it. That's why the American people think the economy is better under Trump. My friend Hutch, though, I wanted to get you involved and ask you a question. I think you erroneously say that the border is secure. Now I don't believe that, but let's just say hypothetically that's true. You think that Biden achieved that by executive order? A simple yes no be correct or sufficient. His executive order did that. After pursuing a bipartisan immigration okay. bill that they negotiated for five months with Lankford and Cinema, uh, yes. Okay, gotcha. My question yeah. is, why did Biden say the border was secure for three years and not issue an executive order if he could have done it all the while? There's a difference I don't think between. I think what he's doing is illegal, and I and I disagree with it. And I condemn the Biden administration for doing an illegal executive action. Okay, so my There's, point. Is, okay, the question was the Hutch. And then I'll respond uh, quickly. Go ahead, Hutch. The, the problem with the border is the, uh, our asylum laws. You guys understand this, right? Our no, asylum it's not laws are. Holy yes, Christ. Let's, yes we'll, let him finish is. first. Anybody can let him, wait, let him say anybody, the problem first. Yeah. Anybody can come to our border, and if as long as they go through legal means and they meet a certain set of criteria, they can apply for asylum. And when they are, apply for asylum, they are allowed to come into the country, sometimes with an ankle monitor, sometimes with a burner phone. And these this backlog takes anywhere between five to eight years. Our immigration laws were written in the 60s, well before we saw the level of influx that we've seen during recent times. If you want to address the problem at the border meaningfully, you need a bill through Congress, which is why he worked with Republicans. Langford is a MAGA Republican. This is not a rhino. He himself and McConnell and Lindsey Graham all admitted, and, and Trump himself admitted that Trump killed that bill for political reasons. If, if I can't to address the border, I, I'm sorry, Rob. I'm sorry, Rob, but Gibbs, please, Gibbs has been waiting though. For 30 seconds. Please, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm, for 30 I, seconds. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm Rob. Gibbs is, Gibbs is saying he doesn't. He's not allowing you. Gibbs, Gibbs was next, and he wants to do on the same issue. So, thanks for talking from the point, Gibbs. That's cool. He'll swarm away now. Thank you. Don't worry. That's fine. Let's talk the border. First of all, let me tell you how dishonest this is. 2016, we Trump posted a bill. He wanted to get a bill through Congress. It had everything they had in the most recent bill. Except it had more. The only thing not included was the Dreamers. This is how fucking the, the Democrats work. They use people like the Dreamers, and then they don't even put them on the newest bill and even include them. And so they sit here and go, oh, it's bipartisan, et cetera, et cetera. Even though the other bill gave them more judges, more of everything they wanted, and it gave us the border wall. This guy down here, Hutch, doesn't know what's happening on the border. I live near the you border. You don't know what's I mean, in the bill. I, I, you don't know I, what's in the bill. I do know what's in the bill. You clearly don't know what's in the bill. 
Let him let's 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 let's
They did. Wait, hang on. No. They wanted something different than that. That's just all they could get. Hang, hang on. A bit, but didn't call, what is Dan Collins that I'm providing? Cool. What I'm saying is that they could have picked nothing, which is what Trump picked, or they could have picked no, no, something. People on the board picked. They picked something. So where where's the intel? But I'm not seeing the necessary well, inference. Well, I'm, well, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, well, you're saying that the inference. You're you're saying the inference is they wanted. They wanted this, right? No, they wanted something they different. Did. They just would have taken this because no, that's all they could get. Let me give you a better analogy. Literally, that's what's going on. Yeah, it's not. Let me give you a Let's throw it to Gibbs. Wait, wait. We're throwing it to Gibbs, and then it's going to be Hutch responding to that. Yeah, let me give you a better analogy. What really happened is the Border Patrol is going, oh, my God, we're dying out here of thirst. And Biden went out his weak old man dick and then pissed on him. And they said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I needed the water in my life. And, they, you know, thank God. That's what they were asking for. They needed something, and it was better than nothing. I mean, I, honestly, if I'm dying in the Sahara, I'd fucking drink some piss, too. Why, why, why don't you just want to Why don't you just want to And I'll tell you why. Hold on. Oh, let me finish. I know you like to interrupt. But listen, this is not the Pisco show. Uh, here's the deal. Hey, it's real show. simple. Yeah, when we go look at this, this bill that in 2018 had more of everything you'll ask for. The only thing it didn't have the Dreamers. And why it didn't have the Dreamers is he took it to the Republican base. The Republican base along the border said, fuck that. Exactly. They took it back and it didn't have it. Hold exactly. on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is how dishonest point, you are. Hold on. This is, it's not a free point. This is how dishonest you're being because the same bill came around again, basically, but with less. And guess what? The same group of people you're rioted. Making and said, my point hold for on. Me. Thank no, no, no. Guys. Not the Trump people. The P Trump just knows it was a big enough group of Republicans. Republicans that sat here on the border and go, no, we don't want this shit. And guess what? The Dems didn't even put forth anything about the Dreamers, so they killed the bill that was better and had more of what they wanted, and they just used the Dreamers as an excuse. You just it's said the all of this because they wanted up. to ship more people across the nation. This is what happened, it's right? Very so, clear. It's so very clear. No, no, it is what happened. You're just you killed it over no, the no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. You killed it over the Dreamers. Like Where were the Dreamers on the new bill? Well, let me ask this. It was bipartisan. Why didn't the Dems include the Dreamers? No, no, no. I want to thank you. It's okay, Pisco, Pisco, it's a great response, but Hutch yeah. has been waiting very much, and I want to throw it over to Hutch. You need to, we have IRI, we need to be clear about. We have Turk. Sorry, we need to be clear about what the Border Patrol said. What they said was the head of the Border Patrol said, while not perfect, the Border Act of 2024 is a step in the right direction and is far better than the current status quo. This is why the National Border Patrol Council endorses this bill and hopes it's, it hopes for its quick its quick passage. Donald Trump personally intervened, called uh, conservative senators, and threatened them if they were to give Biden a win during an election year. What you're I, saying is that you know better than the Border Patrol Union, which again, this is a divided government. You're not going to get some bill that makes. Republicans entirely happy and Democrats entirely happy. It did put limitations on our asylum. That would have yep. helped. It did that hire was the more. the first thing they it said is better than the status quo. And the it did responding from our Please, excuse me. Let me just finish. To, to hire more immigration judges. It did have more funding to hire more Border Patrol uh, uh, agents. And Donald Trump killed the bill. So I just don't think you guys have a leg to stand on to saddle this p entirely on Biden's watch when he it's worked with Republicans in good faith for months. You had the yeah, leader you, of the Senate on the Republican side endorse the bill. You had Lankford. It's not fake news. You can look up the quote yourself. Well, Listen, we we heard the wars on the migration on none of this kind of guy. We were begging for money. We got we got people. We've 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 got people waiting. Wait, wait, one second, one second, one second. Keep talking until I get my chance. What? I would like a chance to talk. Okay, but I understand you have a chance to talk, but I has been waiting, Turk's been waiting, Joe's been waiting. There's a lot of people who are in line, so I got to get to everyone. There's eight people. It is what it is. A lot of people don't like each other, so they're very energetic. I'm going to get down the list. So yeah. I'm going to I'm just going to go down the list straight up to make sure people have a chance to speak who haven't talked much of the show. And IRI, uh, I want to throw it to you first, then Turk, then Joe. Then we're probably going to get to Rob eventually. So, yeah, I mean, the border is shut down courtesy of Biden's executive order it's a temporary fix it'll probably get struck down by the courts eventually as pisco said it, it, it's you know but but you can look up yourselves the border crossing numbers are the same as the end of the trump administration now that being said i want to go back to my question about what is trump's plan to make housing more affordable the only thing i've heard is drill baby drill increase the drilling going to bring down inflation if i understood correctly but inflation is already below three percent the lowest it's going to go is like two percent so i'd love to hear more about that from you guys because Kamala's proposed some ideas which you guys poo-pooed on but what is trump offering to bring down my rent so yeah i, I don't want to run too much defense and i, I really I, I i love gibbs sometimes god brings its strongest soldiers for the hardest battles 
So that's always nice to see. Um, I am kind of concerned, however, that nobody on the right side talked about some of the housing policies that he proposed. I don't agree with them. I, I, I almost said the M word there. I'm sorry. I hope that lovely person kicks rocks with these policies, but he did articulate the idea of federal land use. So basically repurposing some of the federal land that's currently not in use, like military bases, certain um, things within the Bureau of Land Management to turn that into housing. I don't agree with that. It's very, and there's very obvious reasons why any liberal who pays attention to the news for 30 seconds can understand why that's a poor policy. Another one is the idea of restricting in some capacity larger corporations from buying homes and using them for things like rental pro properties. He spoke to that a little bit. And then he also, as I think Gibbs was trying to articulate and others were trying to articulate some relation with immigration as it relates to construction. Basically, he argues in one way or another that restricting immigration can help reduce housing costs. I don't know how exactly that works out, but that does tie to a deeper point where it would be interesting if there was a second debate just specifically on housing, especially considering that wasn't mentioned in the previous debate at all. Turk, so, 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 so just to clarify, oh, okay, I right. Well, can I quick 15, 20 seconds quickly. because we got to get down the list. Yeah. So it sounds like privatize federal land, kick people out, and restrict corporations from certain business practices. And I wonder if my conservative friends would agree with those things. Where is Kamala Harris going to get the procurement for her housing? Where is she going to procure the land for that? Yeah, but that doesn't mean land. On, she would Andrew. be offering incentives. Question, she would be offering fam. incentives to make it cheaper and uh, for to Yeah, no, that's well, is that is that what her plan is? Buildings. Yeah, is that what her plan is? It actually specifically goes for like 1200 square foot homes a specific tax credit for these businesses to oh, incentivize them to build to build to build, to you, build more homes you spend money and you have public private partnerships it's not mm -hmm. that difficult in terms of what do you think they did for the infrastructure yeah so well, so hang on uh, you public what, private do partnerships? They, what do you think they yeah, did yeah. The you have you have public private partnerships you have you, you know um, state offices as well that coordinate where to build mm. stuff i don't it's not something like that's like oh, there's three not, three electric chargers they built for like however how many billion was that again, somebody said it earlier like they, yeah, how go, many offices did it take to like spend that many billions of dollars you want to go line, line, item by line item. Oh, you want to yeah. talk about economics this is what's so okay. frustrating the republicans and normies really and i, I it's, it's crazy to come on these panels and i feel like i'm the only one that talks to anybody outside of uh, their house ever you talk to these people and they go man it's really annoying to see that democrats spent my dollars on things like i don't know two million to study uh dying butcher's language in paris france oh we spent billions of dollars on three electric charging stations under biden's administration's uh what was it a make america bullshit again uh bill it's fucking crazy like i'm just sitting here seeing this and y'all are trying to sit here and say this is economic growth because you'll throw money at a problem with no real solution and then Republican just expect the regular american to pay taxpayers Wait, to pick quick, up slack quick, pisco pisco you keep saying this but the amount of ev chargers on biden's watch has doubled and they're currently building a thousand new uh, chargers each week. Oh where are you getting God. this? Yeah, they haven't, yeah they I, I, haven't I don't know where they're getting anything, it. But the Biden administration hasn't done anything to address the cost of the EVs and then the worker shortages within that. That's always been one of the problems. They did a federal rebate EVs. for the EVs. What do you mean? There, there's a tax on a seventy five hundred dollar cash I rebate not for EVs. For like an hour, and I watch y'all dance. I just want to tap dance a little bit, and then you can respond. There are the point I'm trying to make here is that there's still gaps within its particular policies, which is something I mentioned to Pisco like an hour and a half ago at this point concerning housing. And maybe him and I will have to have a conversation about this after the stream itself so we can like sort of hash that part out. I engage a little bit with that one. Yeah, there, no, there are gaps. I, I agree with you, Joe. There, yeah, there are yeah, gaps. Yeah. This was a bill, just like the border bill, that was had to go through the process, the meat grinder of making Absolutely. legislation. It's not going to be perfect. And so yeah. I can't go on a, on a line item by line item basis and speak to all the electric chargers or whatever, but I do know. It's eight even chargers, two and a half years. But, but for instance, not, not, to, not to cut you off, not to cut you off. Like you spoke towards the three million houses, right? There's still yeah. a problem about land uses and land utilization that's going to be a direct challenge that she has to address. I think if she is going to do something like parade the three million houses policy, she should also articulate to people, how am I going to deal with those upfront obstructions if I want to do public-private partnership, like restrictive zoning laws, like just zoning generally, like the... Yeah. 
you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, there's other no, no, no. That, yeah. that, that will absolutely have to be worked out. I'm not saying it's going to be that. Like, okay, maybe I, I, I didn't mean to imply that it was trivial. These are things sure. that are going to take time and money and and resources to think about and smart people to craft legislation. But like, th yes, I understand that. But Kamala's not going to say that on a debate stage and say, you know, there's zoning issues. Like, it's it's an idea. Well, it's, I, it's a concrete idea. And, and the same thing doesn't be, like apply to Trump. Trump's like, we're going to deport 20 million people. Where are the logistics for that? Where are the concerns about government expenditures? Uh, uh, for that and paying for everyone's court fees and and increasing exponentially the number of immigration judges to process deportation orders okay so i understand that there's going to be logistics down the road those are going to sure. have to be dealt with but i i think that it's not this unthinkable hurdle for home do you, purchases okay, okay yeah, you just have you to be the final that, question like, joe because we have two people on the list yeah, turk and rob yeah. okay because look like real talk like one part of me just thinks this way where it's like i don't really get like when when republicans were talking about build a wall build a wall build a wall they weren't necessarily arguing the semantics of like well what's the wall going to be made of they just said no motherfucker you build that wall and we'll figure it out later mm -hmm. however something that kamala harris in this case and even donald trump's case if we're talking about the border wall needs to articulate is that what does that look like to to do those things which is why again i'm arguing that there needs to be more debates i think it's the onus of those who are in support of biden harris the onus of those in support of trump vance to be like yo no you need to debate more but those debates have to be concentrated that allows focus for kamala harris to pin him on particular policy points that allows donald trump to stay focused something that he struggles with in debates already and any republican who says otherwise is being dishonest so that could be something of a good if those debates moving forward are directly concentrated on those policy gaps that both these parties are representing but and, why and is there this pressure on Kamala to come forward with more details and not Trump? I, I haven't heard. No, I, well, you're the first person. Just that we're throwing that question to Turk. To Turk is that question is going. Th thank you for allowing me to answer that yeah. question. So IRI, I 100% agree. I wish we could have focused in the, the debate this week on actually drilling into the policies that we're going to be going for in 2025 next year, right? And this reinforces what Joe's asking. It's like, I really wish there was more more substance to this debate and unfortunately Kamala was not really pressed on some of the details on her positions that she said I understand y'all y'all were able to debunk Andrew's point of list one uh, policy it's like yes there was three but it's like we want more right then when Trump was asked about policy questions I give y'all the Medicare one, but like y'all didn't like that answer, so that's on you, not on necessarily. What about tariffs? Trump. You agree with this tariff policy? Ten percent on everything coming into the country, maybe twenty percent. I, I think it worked a little bit. There probably is good some refinement that could happen, and it's probably a good that's thing to try. That's going to increase prices in the short to medium term. But we would love well. to d d dive into these specifics a bit more in the debate rather than continuing to act on previous policies that he did do. We let's talk about the future, right? We're trying to go forward. That's why I think we needed to focus more on the actual policies and just Kamala never got that opportunity. And that's why I think in the debate, she she did good on the delivery, but she didn't do good on the policy. And that's why going back to the original query for the debate here tonight, I don't think she did really well. And, well, uh, and to be clear, I'm not pushing dogs. back on the idea that Come Donald on. Trump should not debate and the onus isn't on him either, I, right? Is the onus is on both of them though, because Donald Trump has to stop like being afraid of women or whatever the fuck he's going on about. Apparently has some fear against women has happened like two debates now, which is not, I mean, it is what it is, but it's still like, it's the onus on both of them to articulate. Yeah, Trump, that, hey, Trump definitely has character flaws moments. and he could have done a lot better to address the specific questions. He shouldn't have caught the bait. I, I grin, I, we agree. A lot of us actually agree at the beginning in our opening statements. But again, I want to drive this fact. It's like we need to know more about the policy and how it's actually impacted. Talking to these three million houses, where are these houses really needed? They're needed in urban areas, right? They're needed in these in suburbs, right? Where are we going to put them? Going back to Joe Lewis's point, are we going to start doing eminent domain? Are we going to go and buy bulk, buy bulk land out by the airports? These are things we need to know and we need to talk it's, about and we need to at least have a discussion about it. Zoning isn't the major issue. Like 
you understand we have a housing shortage because construction Robert, it's, it's an example to the argument the pandemic because of the rising interest rates like they are ready to build if we can incentivize them it's not a matter of land or where they're going to do it they'll work that I, out who's they, they yeah. who's yeah. they, 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 they that's a good who question. are they, they who are these people are, ready to build hey bro they nacho they fries you know hang on no, no, the, the entire universe of public and the private universe. stakeholders of so there's an entire the entire the universe answer the question lizard overlords wait, bro. Wait, wait. lizard so overlords private landowners um state regulators state governors the federal regulators uh the administration itself a lot of people need to coordinate to make this happen we're not saying that it doesn't need to happen but they will find a way if their incentives are there i arise absolutely correct you guys are being delusional if you think that the government well, our where's government the proof? cannot Invest Where in is housing. the proof? Our government Bro, absolutely has capacity. We got, we got to throw invest it over. In housing. We, we got to throw it over to Rob because Rob's been waiting. Okay, thanks. Uh, now, I think if we're trying to take this to the debate a little, Gibbs illustrated exactly what the point of Donald Trump is: is that he took the bait, right? So I set this argument up with Hutch. I asked Kutch, I said, if an executive order would be able to solve immigration, why didn't Biden do it three years ago? Why instead did he say that it, the border was secure? Please, Gibbs, you've already made yourself full enough. Uh, why didn't he allow or d no. say that it was a problem the whole time? Why did he gaslight America and get Kamala Harris gaslight, Mayorkas gaslight, and say it wasn't a problem? And Hutch immediately goes, well, the better solution would be it's about asylum policy and blah, blah, blah. And he does this song and dance, which Gibbs then takes the bait. The point that I'm trying to make is... Oh, how am I taking the debate here please, whenever I'm quoting real issues and actual because policy? I, because I set up what the ultimate argument would be, and oh, I was man. unable to finish it for 25 minutes because you took it in a different direction taking the debate. Sure, so that's not bait. It's a, I'm bringing real issues to the table. Because intelligently, what Pisco did is very similar to what Kamala Harris did, is say, ah, but the real problem is there was a bipartisan bill that Biden wanted that Trump didn't do. Then we spent 30 minutes talking about that bipartisan bill when what we really saw what hutch illustrated was if an executive order would have been able to solve this but biden refused to do it it proves that they were happy with the direction the border was going which the american people are against and they're only now trying to talk about it because it's an election issue which gets to the problem of this debate and of with kamala harris which is she has not had any adversarial press she has been hidden she only gave an 18-minute pre-recorded interview with Dana Bash. She didn't have policies up on her website. Turk is correct that it's just facsimile like statements that she's now using, many of them of which been copied from the Trump administration. And it gets to the point, like I said, that Bernie Sanders said, she's just saying what she thinks the American people want to hear. That's it. And Hutch is okay with that. Hutch she's, proves it. Because Hutch is now saying, center. please, let me... She's please, pivoting to the center please, to win an let election. Me finish. Please, let me... I tried to be generous this whole debate and not interrupt. Uh, People. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, uh, so what Hutch proves that point. He's saying, ah, oh, well, the Biden administration could have solved this day one if they wanted with an executive order. They could have. That's how they did it now. That's how they solved it now. And my point is, but they gaslit us for three years and said, there's no problem with the border. 2021, no border problem. 2022, no border problem. 2023, no border problem. 2024, there's a border problem. It's Trump's fault. Oh, but now we can solve it with an executive order. Oh, and by the way, when we tell you all the shit that we could have done while we were in office, like reduce inflation and build houses, and we're going to do, uh, you know, child tax credits, all this shit that we could have done. Now we promise we'll do them just until the election's over and then if they win they'll rescind on all of these promises so what i'm telling you is it is clear that if you're listening don't take the bait this debate is about one thing the record of donald trump he's had four years of policies that he's instituted he's had adversarial relationships with the press and he's had town counts or city halls and etc where he's talked over in fact he talks too much he's constantly going on places where he's talking about his policies and other things kamala harris hid and in this debate, she said nothing. And she has a history of flip-flopping on every major policy position. And she did not give any details on how that would change. And we can see that her administration lied to you, not just about Biden's cognitive decline, but lied to you about the border, could have solved it at any point with an executive order, and chose not to until they knew it was an issue for the election. Now they're pretending to give a shit. As soon as they're elected, it'll go right back to the same open border policies. I do agree with Rob on one thing. I think that we should go after people's records. And I think the record that 
most matters is this former president's attempt to steal the 2020 election, which is the area you guys don't want to get into. You think that we don't want to talk about economics. we shouldn't focus on Kamala's you, 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 you guys think that You guys think that we don't want to talk about economics. We just spent the vast majority of the debate talking about economics. Well, it's because you, you don't understand economics. You want to know... You want to know part of it. Yeah, okay. You guys like not let's, knowing... Let's what's focus about. on however, the other however, previous well, policies this, and not well, the other people previous country policies. Care about, gotcha. People care about I mean, this are country. You not? What people care about in this country is the fact that the former president tried to steal the 2020 election and doesn't give and a shit about our constitution. He didn't try to steal that. This is another lie. Well, okay, wait, wait, wait. Well, first, how about okay? Let's do it this way because I, I don't like the like. First, Pisco, you'll have a minute to explain how yeah. he tried to steal the election. And Gibbs, you'll get a minute to respond how he didn't and now why it's a lie. Okay, and Hutch, I'll write your name down. I got to use the bathroom. Don Please don't want to say slur. Sure. Yeah. Donald Trump lost the 2020 mm -hmm. election. Every oh, you're not you don't agree with that, Gibbs. You don't agree that, that Donald Trump fairly lost the 2020 election, but I'll I'll, I'll say it again. Did I say that? I didn't, well, I didn't say someone, that. Someone gave a hmm. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe that was Joe. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay. You know what? I'll give you that. You know, I confused, I, I, I confused Andrew before, too, so my apologies for that. So he absolutely lost the 2020 election. Recounts confirm it. Court cases confirm it. Investigations by governments confirm it, both state and federal. And even though he lost the election, he tried to remain in office. He tried to do, through, uh, do so through several means, including but not limited to using fake electors, trying to convince state legislatures to rescind the, or their electoral votes, and trying to have his crowd pressure um, and then ultimately insurrect against the government uh, for the purpose of stealing the 2020 election. And that is absolutely disqualifying. He has promised, he has promised to pardon the criminals who attacked police officers in the Capitol on January 6th, and he is nowhere close to competent or fit for that reason by itself. Even if I were to grant you, which I don't, any of the economic policy that you just spoke about, the fact that this man tried to upend our constitutional structure is by itself disqualifying. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to tell us, Gibbs, now about why he didn't do that and how he, I'm assuming you're going to say he didn't lose. Gibbs? Notice how he directs uh, it directly to Gibbs because he knows he'll take the bait again. Go wait, ahead, I, wait, I, wait, I wait, 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 let me just quickly say, Dylan is I, in on it. let me just Dylan quickly say, in uh, uh, I'm in on it, yes, no, Gibbs said the thing, and so I said, wait, Let's let Pisco say it. Let's let Gibbs say it. And I want to have them respond. Rob, you can talk about it after. If you if you want to if you think Gibbs doesn't make a good point, you can make a good point after. Gibbs? Yeah, Rob. I, see, listen. I think you're you're talking at cross purposes, Rob. One, I don't think he uh, he said that first. He said his speech peaceful, uh, patriotically. It's been pretty well established. We're just going over going lies. You know, you know what? If I was Trump, I'd probably think things were rigged against me too. I haven't seen any evidence that it's uh, overwhelmingly rigged against him or with whatever. But some of the lawfare could make me see that as if I was Trump. Now, that being said, I don't give a shit about none of that. You know what I care about? Let me tell you what I care about: the treasonous behavior by the Biden administration and the Harris administration along the border. That's problem. I have sat here and heard all this bullshit. Texas, when they joined the United States as a country, it was on the condition, A, we're going to sell part of our land, get our debts done. B, the Rio Grande, which Texas already fought a second war after a the war for independence. Hold oh, on, yo, hold on. No, no, if you let me finish. Texas already fought a second war with Mexico on their own without the U.S.'s help to establish the Rio Grande as our border. That was established. Then, after we established the border, the Rio Grande as a border, we fought Mexico. I don't know if you might have heard of it. Big thing we. called the Mexican-American War. Yeah, the Mexican-American War. Zachary Taylor got elected president afterwards because he was a Rio Grande. Right yeah, big thing happened. Maybe you know, and guess what that was fought over? Mainly because the Rio Grande was the defining point. And now what we've said here and seen is the Biden it's administration late. open it up and then try to stop Texas from defending its sovereign border, which it was agreed upon. The whole reason we rejoined the U.S. That's why you want protection to along that. You want Texas I, don't know. To I haven't said here said anything about seceding. Do you or do you not want to secede? Yes or no, Gibbs? Do you want them to? Secede? Uh, no, I, I mean right now, no. Maybe later, who knows? Maybe I don't know. Later. later. Oh, okay. yeah, like, yeah. Kind of cute I, I mean, game they, they don't okay. actually believe you in both, America. You both got a minute. I, mean, I will say, Gibbs, I mean, I'll give you another 20 seconds because he didn't really address reason. the question much yeah, directly. Yeah, I mean, because kind of what, 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 this question is bullshit, right? And this is what I'm saying. If we're comparing what's more treasonous, mm -hmm. I would say everything on the board is much more treasonous than the speech uh, that Trump gave and where he said peacefully and patriotically, and then other people took it to heart and went crazy. You just uh, said like, you want to leave the union, Gibbs. I didn't say yeah, that. Did I say that? Well, those, this is yes, bullshit. Hold on, wait. 
are if a traitor. I said, you if are I said, a traitor, yeah. Admiral. Oh, if they, hold on. Are you, wait, hold on. This beast goes. What hold on. Admiral, Admiral in the yeah, yeah, I, I guess of this bullshit. Let me tell you. I'm, let me tell you something. A, a, a Pisco here, he's a lawyer, right? He knows about contract law. If one party huh? doesn't uphold their obligations, guess what? Then the other party has to the one out of the contract. Yeah, and so whenever they, whenever they don't enforce the border, that's just as treasonous. It's a warning. You can accuse the Trump. It's a warning. What Gibbs is doing is he's warning, saying if you don't believe, if you don't agree with Texas on border policy, we might leave because this is a contract. And you because we are, we, we signed yeah. the U.S. You're, to join. You're yes defending, no? you're defending secessionist mm. thought, and no, I'm defending you're, you're, you're our border, defending, which you are not. Way, you are you're, you're, like, opening I, I, up I for everybody. Say, I just want to say you are literally giving the. I'm not even exaggerating. The exact why do you, same. Why do you hate wait, wait, farmers wait, wait, and ranchers on the border? You are literally giving the exact same argument mm. that the Confederates gave for why they were allowed to leave the Union. That this no, was I'm a not. contract. Wait, no. Yes, you are. That this was you a know, contract. Well, sanctuary wait, cities wait, are also giving the same argument. Let me, let me, let me, can, can we, can we, guys, South 20, are we, 20, 20, 20 seconds and we're moving on. This is a yeah, dead end, sure. okay? So sure, 20, it's a dead end, but I just want to finish this. That Gibbs is giving the Confederacy argument, which was— I'm not, though. You're lying. You're lying. I'm about to explain why it's the same. I'm about to explain why it's the exact well, same. You're going to so explain it correctly. The, the legal argument of the Confederates was we entered into this union on conditions, and once the union rescinded the— None of them were uh, sovereign uh, countries. So they? Please stop. Look, and, I said 20, 30 seconds. Pisco, 15 seconds. I have a timer. Go. Yeah. Sure. Once they breached that contract, that is the union by electing Lincoln, who was going to stop the expansion of slavery, that they had the right to secede. That was the exact secessionist argument that you just heard from Gibbs. Gibbs, so you have 50 news. seconds. Go. I yeah, how many of those states were also their own separate countries before joining the union? There's a reason Texas is the only state that can fly its flag equal to the United States flag because we were the Republic of Texas. We won our independence independent of the United States without their help. So guess what? We came in on equal footing. Part of the equal footing bargaining and part of the contract is you're both of sound mind. Okay. You agree to something. The United States is not uh, pulling their end of the bargain here with regards to the border. You okay, would know that if you with the law school and we're actually a lawyer. Okay. Damn, Rob, you wanted to respond to something earlier? Yes. Uh, notice how I said in my opening that what you'll see is the constant deflection from the records of Joe, uh, the, the Harris-Biden administration and the Trump administration and how things like the economy and border were much better under him. We got Hutch to admit that actually all it would have taken was an executive order from the Harris-Biden administration to solve everything. They instead lied for three years and said that the border was secure and it was fine. There is no answer from anyone on the left by that. But Pisco is smart, like Kamala Harris was smart, in throwing out bait. And just like Trump took the bait, Gibbs takes the bait so he does exactly what i said he would do bait. in the opening yeah, statement he keeps talking is, shit about you gibbs he can do that but you know he, he, i'm he not gonna take it clear. it's just because i have a different argument style than him i'm not gonna sit here and argue about in the weeds whenever i have real issues i give a shit you. about uh, he's dog walking, he's dog, the only thing he's dog walking is his honking uh, reputation because he's sitting here and he's wrong i'm spitting facts he's over here sad i don't know i i'm sorry but rob you're wrong no, I appreciate the interruptions from everyone. Else. I'll finish not, my point. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna finish with Rob Hutch. I got your name down. Keep interrupting. It's it's fine. It's okay. Everybody good? Okay. Uh, so again, all that this did was Pisco. He knew that they had to take the bait because they don't have an answer for the fact that the American people correctly blame the Biden Harris administration because they could have solved this with an executive order, right? Hutch. Hutch was the one the question was directed to. So I'll get Hutch's answer. I don't need your answer, Pisco. Uh, we'll see what Hutch says. He's the one that said that the executive order solved all of this. So they intentionally allowed this to occur. And what they're doing on the left is just what Harris did: was it refused to talk about these things and instead pivot to ma democracy, ma race. I've talked to Pisco, as he knows, probably 20 plus hours on January 6th. It's been litigated ad nauseum. It's all the, as people were struggling to buy eggs and milk and afford houses, Pisco and Hutch and I or I and their ilk were celebrating the January 6th committee, celebrating throwing nonviolent prisoners in jail, celebrating the terrible treatment of them. That's the things that they want to talk about. So to the undecided voter out there, I implore you, were your wages going up under Trump? Could you afford homes? Could you afford eggs? Could you afford groceries? You toilet paper? Border more secure? Was Were we on the verge of World War III? The answer is all of those things were better and Pisco and company don't give a shit. They're fine with that you know, because they just want to use lawfare to go after their opponents and scream racism and democracy just like they did in 2016 saying Trump would be a racist and a threat to democracy. You know, we, Same we tired also, argument. We also had the largest protests in our nation's history when Donald Trump was president. The largest amount of civil unrest. Do we really want to go back to that? Because I'm yeah, really it was all whipped up by communists. You also people. lost 1.1 million people to a pandemic. I bet you if Hillary Clinton was president, wouldn't have lost anywhere near as many of those people. Wait, what okay. metric? Was okay, I want to hang on. Hang on. Wait, 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 w
This is I kind of want to I kind of want to take a different tack so let them finish this up and I I want to ask a different Andrew. question. No, you answer Rob's question, Hutch. Don't run, answer, answer his, his question. question. No, you didn't it answer shit. Ways, answer Andrew. his question. It, it cuts both ways. If Donald Trump uh, was able to do border wall by appropriating defense funds, why didn't he do it the first year if it was such what? an emergency on the it's border? What about his, why it's what you about do it the first his, year, Rob? It's, it's what about his... trying to get it done through Congress, ex right? Excuse me, excuse me. I'll yes, answer the question. It's what about ism, one. So you refuse to answer the it's question. Not. said, what about Trump? Yes, it is. No, you're I the answered one the question. Saying, you're the he one that tried said... To get it. He wanted a bill no. from Congress, and Trump no. killed the bill, and he didn't exactly... Wasn't just, that's not true. What, in 2021, did Trump kill the bill? Mm. In 2022, did Trump kill the bill? In 2023, did Trump Why kill the Trump bill? Why did Trump build the wall in 2017? Because he was stymied he by... Done about, he could have done it himself. He you asked three years. Well, that's you amazing. That's what question. I said. You asked a question and I'll answer. That's right. If you don't, it was a question. I want to hear. I want to hear Rob's response. I can't hear his response. I will answer. Rob's if you in trouble right just, now. I'm not in trouble. I or I, please. Well, you're, someone you're who claims that they wanted to stay in their bubble, not debate me. You should keep your own advice. Uh, the reason is right, because you're the person that said oh. that a simple executive order was able to secure the border. The fact is the border was much more secure, largely because of the executive orders of Donald Trump when he was there. I never said Trump could build a wall by executive order. You're the person who said that an executive order, quote, secured the border right now. You can't answer for the fact that if that's all it took. I did. did you won't listen. Again, oh, you did not answer, and I'll repeat it. Why did Biden lie for three years and say the border was secure when all he had to do was pass an executive order? Yeah, Why did he let millions order, upon millions order, of people? Wait, 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 wait. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, the the question was directed towards Hutch, so I'm going to have Hutch respond, then we're going to go to Pisco uh, because he's I've raising his hand. Well, question, Andrew, I'm happy to Andrew, is your no, thing still there? Yeah, it was going to be Hutch, Andrew, then Pisco. I've answered the question. I'm happy to answer it again. A more meaningful way to address the border issue is through Congress. He tried to get that done. When Trump killed that bill, he used an executive order. That's a lie. What Congress bill was he pushing in 2021? It's on his website. He has a, a no, shut up, Pisco. Which, shut which up. bill was he pushing in 2021 or in 2022 or in 2023? He did the the bills, immigration bill, as far as I understand, what, in 2021. What, what I, the no, bills, I'm not familiar with the specifics. You've but, only cited yeah. one bill that you said was bipartisan. So if he did something that was totally different, that wasn't this bipartisan bill that didn't have support of Republicans, it wasn't just that he could have solved it with a bill. He was literally gaslighting the country. So was Kamala Harris, that there wasn't a border crisis. So was Mayorkas. I don't think there was ever a point where they were saying that it wasn't a crisis. Mayorkas yes. was testifying in front of Congress saying that our system is stretched beyond its capacity our current infrastructure along our border was never meant to deal with this level of influx i tried to explain it to you guys before the issue is our asylum laws it's not people like crossing the border illegally it's our asylum uh, infrastructure being overwhelmed by tens it's of thousands taco. of people coming from central south america and mexico he tried to pass a bill meaningfully addressing that and trump killed it and so he didn't exist. Uh, did, uh, didn't uh, Kamala go down there to address the root causes of the issue and just fail and miserably? Guess what? And just, guess what? just like when she went to go I'm negotiate it with Putin I'm, and Zelensky and three days triangle. later, they rolled in the you're tanks. About the, clearly, clearly she's really bad northern at negotiations triangle. with foreign policy. Listen, you're talking about the Northern Triangle. She uh, was in charge of a diplomatic mission to help address the root causes it, it failed of migration from those countries. No, guess what happened when she started doing that? Migration it, went down from those countries every Every year, we announced a oh uh, massive God. aid package to Guatemala that Trump canceled on his watch. If you really want to address uh, migration, how did, wait, how did he cancel it on his watch? Help? If she was the, the czar under Biden, how does that make sense? Did he watch. like somehow, somehow on like take over for Biden and cancel the ball? Like her, oh, when he was oh, okay. president. He canceled a uh, foreign aid package that we were giving to Guatemala at the time. And guess what the fuck happened? Migration increased from that country. Why are they getting our money anyway? Be, what do you want to, it's a way to address the issue. If you want to reduce migration, you can help them have better domestic situations. So or we can just corrupt, build a wall that works. More economic. You're so, okay, I'm glad you brought up the wall. He claims that he built hundreds of new miles of wall. Then why did we have this massive influx? Did it help? Because the Bidens have been tearing it down. 
No, no, wait. If I may, if I may, to, if, I may if, if I may, to address specifically the lie or maybe just the okay. un misunderstanding that uh, Hutch just said. Well, then we do said need to move no on. No one though, was saying the Biden administration wasn't saying the border wasn't secure. In 2019, the border was called a manufacturer crisis by Pelosi. In 2021, mm -hmm. my Orcas said the border is secure; it is not open. In 2021, he Biden said there wasn't a crisis at the border; they're handling it. In April 2021, Saki said the term crisis referring to the situation the border is incorrect it's more of a challenge and september 2022 let, let, let me finish, let me finish, finish one more in september 2022 and i've been generous and not interrupting you i think you've agreed to that so when i'm reading statements right. that are fact show that you're factually incorrect please listen and then you can respond uh in september of 2022 vice president kamala harris with chuck todd said the border is secure but we do have to manage a broken immigration system so they constantly yeah. downplayed what was going on at the border saying the border was secure you said that none of them said the border was secure or that there was a crisis. That was border. during Title 42. That was during uh, the COVID Title 42. See, you want quotes from 2023? Hey, hang on a second. So just to be clear, everything you just said was during a time in which there were millions of, expo of, of not expulsions, but you just administratively pushing them out under t Title 42. You acknowledge that at least, right? You but were, even I, still, it, 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 there were things like that occurring at the time, but yeah. the numbers that were coming in at that time were still record numbers. So at the time, Trump these had, statements- Trump had record numbers under his administration no, 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 as well. Not even yeah. close, not even close yes, to the numbers did. we did. In 2019, it was the highest level since Obama. He had it above Obama, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so then I'm. You're saying the emergency powers during the, COVID. Just, uh, I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear before I look up the data. Then I'll be quiet and I'll look it up and present it to you. But what you all are saying is that the 2019 numbers of illegal immigrants or uh, undocumented encounters were very similar to 2022. That I'm it wasn't massively worse in 2022. No, 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 no. That's what I thought. That's the claim I'm making. I'm, so you I'm saying that this hard claim? Wait, 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 wait. The question. There was a question asked. I do want to make sure that I could hear the rest of the yeah, answer. Yeah. So, so none of us are. You said that there were record numbers. The number of immigration in the in the late period has been increasing. They increased massively under Donald Trump. It is the if you look at the slope. Even if you guys are uh, sometimes it's good to keep an eye on what the Groypers are doing, what Nick Fuentes is doing. He he excoriates Donald Trump for this because the the record the, the number absolutely did spike under Donald Trump uh, at various points in the administration. They went down in twenty. 2020, when they started doing the Title 42 administrative yes. switches out because of COVID, uh, yeah. absolutely that is true. But Biden continued that policy until a certain time, and then the the crisis, it, you know, emerged and it was really, really, really bad. And so I and I agree. But it wasn't say, a crisis when, still having sent people you, to New York. You, you, you can even say that some messaging around this has been really, really bad. What you cannot say though is that that Biden did not present a bill in 2021, a comprehensive immigration plan. He did on day one. He had a hundreds of page long bill that addressed border security, addressed the broken immigration system. So that absolutely is true. And then the question about why didn't he do this executive action sooner? I think what Biden is doing is illegal. I disagree with him doing that. I think this it's unconstitutional. It solved the problem according, it, so you think it solved the problem according it, to Hutch. I don't, what, what I'm saying is what I you've talked about the, here, what you've talked about of things spiking under Donald Trump is a red herring because it is unresponsive to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there was clearly a crisis as the numbers show that we were hitting record highs in 2022 and the message we were getting from the Biden administration including Kamala Harris was there is not a crisis at the border the thrust of their message since 2021 2022 and 2023 is the border problems being massively blown out of proportion by Republicans was there a crisis, a crisis please yeah, Trump said so. Yeah. Trump said there was a crisis going back in 2016, and the numbers have exploded since then. What? Trump was doing no, everything he could. Trump had a two-pronged approach. One, he was trying to get bills passed that were the government was being shut down in one of the longest government shutdowns in history because Democrats said, Walls, please. It was it was Democrats that shut it down. They were controlling Congress. Yeah, I said that. Uh, uh, no. I said that. I said that. I said that. I said that. I said that was like to He tried to demand a border wall and then he folded. So that's his shot. Yeah, what I'm saying they he shut down the government. He, they he shut down Sorry, the government one, one, one of the walls were racist. They shut down the government saying that walls are racist and now it's part of Kamala Harris's plan to build a racist wall. Well, so you guys didn't just, answer my question about the wall either. I, I mean, answer, you, you see, didn't. He, claims that, he claims that he built hundreds of miles of new wall. He didn't. It was 52 yeah. miles. But let's just that's, take him at his word. Let's just take him at his word. Uh, he, I mean, he certainly um, renovated a lot of uh, wall. It's a clever job. Um, Policy, right? Yeah, he's, he's, 
He said that this. He said that this would like fix the issue, and then we saw and record spikes. So can we please get to our point here? Can we talk for thirty seconds here, Andrew? That's a clever deflection again, trying to take the bait. No, we're not trying to take the bait again. Notice how Hutch is once more deflecting from the fact that we saw crisis numbers in 2021, 2022, 2023, and the Biden administration was constantly saying it wasn't a crisis. They're only pretending to give a shit now because it's an election you year. My testifying is about, in front of Congress is, saying is, we need more help. We need I, a bill for Congress. You, Hutch, I generously let you talk when you're talking. I don't interrupt you. So if you could do me the same courtesy, I would appreciate that. They're bringing this up during an election year because they're pretending to give a shit about it. And just like they pretended to give a shit for three years. And if they win, they'll stop giving a shit. And all of a sudden we'll see them flying in illegal immigrants like they're doing with Haitian migrants. This is purely about the record of Donald Trump versus the record of the Harris Biden administration. When it comes to the border and the economy, Trump crushes them in all instances. Andrew. Yeah, so I was just wondering, IRI said that the nation under Trump suffered from some of the most widespread protests which were out there. However, IRI, are you willing to acknowledge that Democrats allowed their own cities to get burned down, uh, created Chaz Chop? On top of that, that BLM was headed by uh, Patrice Cullors, who was a avowed communist Marxist at the head of this, and that this had all of the markings of what is called a color revolution. Are you willing to disavow the Marxist leadership of Black Lives Matter, who was at the forefront of those riots and Democrats worked right alongside with them? Are you willing to do that? Well, I'm not familiar with any cities that got burnt to the ground. I think a building or a couple buildings got burnt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. hang on, hang on, hang on. Gibbs, Gibbs, let him, let him, let him well, answer to the communist charge. Well, are you willing to disavow well, the communists who are in charge of Black Lives Matter? I'm not a communist. I'm not a liberal. I don't like, I don't like communists. Weirdos. Yeah. They're, they're screwballs. I don't care for those people. But it yeah. all happened while Trump was president. Can we admit that? And yeah, that Democrats that. worked with communists in order to try to hurt the Trump administration. Why didn't yeah, he I agree. invoke the Insurrection Act then, Andrew? Do you condemn him for not invoking the Insurrection Act, yes or no? <laughs> no, he allowed no. states to individually deal with these Is problems. That a mistake? Was that a mistake? No, no, I don't think that it was a mistake. But you just said that a bunch of the let IRI talk. And then you and I, you and I, bro, stop talking, dude. If you cut me off every five seconds, I can't even make my point. So anyway, back to this. Uh, IRI, you will admit, won't you, that the head of Black Lives Matter, the leadership of Black Lives Matter, were avowed Marxist, correct? How does it, who knows that? I yeah, because listen, we know who they Black are. Patrice Matter. Colors. I don't, I don't, I don't wait, know. Wait, 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 stop, 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 The question, the question was IRI, the question, the question was IRI, I want to hear no. IRI's response. Yeah, let me, let me just say, there is no like centralized leadership of BLM that was sending out marching orders across the nation. BLM had its own little thing in each little city. Now, I understand there were some people at the top of some sort of like national organization that were mm -hmm. some shitheads. I don't disagree with you on that. I don't care. <clears throat> and that Democrats, Democrats specifically, were allowing this type of violence to happen in their streets all over the United States, Boy. and they would do it on purpose. They would give stand-down orders to their own police Hold departments on. to the point, hang on, IRI, to the point okay. where it was the first influx of gun ownership that we saw where Democrats, it started to actually move the goalposts for Democrats. Democrats started going and buying guns in mass in order to defend themselves from these very lunatics. Later, one acquitted, one Kyle Rittenhouse of self-defense, who I remember on your show, you tried to verbally crucify. Irrelevant to the point. Irrelevant to the point. Why did Trump praise Tim Walz? Let IRI speak, Peace Go. It's between okay. me and him. You've talked plenty. I, I don't want to get into a big BLM thing. My whole point is that it My happened God. while Donald Trump was president. Do you admit that? That's the point. What do you so, mean Democrats so, allowed so, it to happen? Wait, so was what? Democrats these are the localized office, issues. Right? By your own admission, you claim these are all localized issues. That these are the this is, is it, Peace Go, why do you keep talking issues. when we're in the middle of having this argument? So if you claim that these are all localized issues, right? Oh, BLM didn't have any grand leadership who was coordinating any of this. So it's all localized and it's up to these local governors, local uh, politicians to deal with these, uh, you know, kind of riots which are going on in their streets. And how did they deal with them, IRI? Didn't they just kind of let them do whatever the fuck they want? Damage property, millions upon millions of dollars in property. Oh, basically, nobody got arrested for any of this and you tried to... Verbally crucify that Rittenhouse, who was false. stop, stop talking, man. Let me 10, make my 000, point. No, there were 10,000 people. Wait, 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 why, Hutch, why, I'll why go it to you after. I promise. I, I promise I'll get it to you, Hutch. You, and you I literally let you get in 
Uh, well, you're lying. Didn't interrupt you once. Didn't interrupt you once. Didn't interrupt you once. IRI, can you tell me if Kyle Rittenhouse deserved to be acquitted? Didn't he deserve to be acquitted? Didn't he? I, he didn't I did not see the evidence. I wasn't on the jury, so I didn't get to see all the evidence. So that's not a call for me to make. I respect the jury's decision. Okay, that's it. But you won't disavow the Marxist leadership either? I thought he just he did. did. Don't know who the, the fact you that literally you don't, don't know so who's in charge of BLM. Andrew, Circle jerk Andrew, is communism, Andrew, it Andrew, is okay. Liberals I, I am a liberal. Will shake hands, like, circle listen, jerk against communism. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. I just want to make it clear. I, I think it's convenient. He suddenly doesn't know. You suddenly don't know who, B, who the head of BLM is. He just That's, acknowledged that he doesn't know their name. the head of BLM is? Yeah, how do you know not know? How do you not know who Patrice Collars is? How do you They're not, not household names? Why would I know who that is? Because cares. you followed, because I watched your program and you followed these BLM riots. That's why I would think you would know. I went you to need BLM to... protests. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes, and yet, for well, some reason, some reason Patrice it escapes ever. you that Patrice Collars was a fucking communist, who w- and that these governors, sure. these localized governors, I, I, when you say, oh, this is Trump's fault, Trump didn't have anything to do with the BLM riots, the local Democrats were allowing these to happen with agitators so ask, like you. Andrew. You were an agitator who went and <laughs> assisted an agitator. The, agitator. because you went and assisted in the agitation oh. of these local protests. You didn't give a fuck Ow. about property damage. I got you didn't shot. Care. I got shot with this little foam bullet, man. Yeah, because you were an agitator. You were an agitator. That's why. <laughs> like Trump was an agitator on January Bro. 6th, right, Andrew? He what did I do? We're ta- okay, that's a what about yeah, us. Can we, yeah, can no, we, no, but I just want to be. I just want to make sure. Hey, I'll, right, I'll, right, I'll, I'll answer you're, directly. Well, we can't. Well, we can't. Okay. Well, I do want to. I do want to wait. No one's talking to Pisco. We'll answer directly. No one's talking to Pisco. Pisco, wait, wait, wait. Pisco, Pisco, Andrew, everybody, everybody, everybody. I want to give Hutch. I've offered. I mean, not Hutch. Sorry, I'm debates with you, Pisco. Okay, I want to give. Wait, wait. I'm going to be both of you. I'm going to be both of you. You have to pay me. Yeah, I'm both of you. I have a huge platform. You're a loser. Okay, they're both muted. Both Pisco and Andrew are muted. Bringing everyone peace and joy, because you know Can I say, we're wait, gonna put wait, them both why, in a volcano. Why did I get and they're muted gonna... in the middle of my argument because because I was telling you it. both. I was telling you both. We gotta give uh, Iri yeah, a time to respond to your Pisco. question. Me and I Iri muted you both. I muted you argument. both because I was trying to give Iri a chance to respond. Your bias is fuck. Go ahead, Iri. Let's uh, let us have Andrew. Don't say. be such a baby about it. How about that? Okay, oh, dude, stop bitching, dude. You know you. What do you mean you're bitching? Oh, I'm being prosecuted. Oh, oh my God, in the bait show. Almost no conservatives, but you bitch. You're the only conservative that comes on and bitch. Okay, you're the only one. Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Okay, down syndrome. Fantastic. You are an actual child. Yes. Hi, Rod. Do you want to respond to the big crime baby about why he's big and crying and a baby? You okay with that? Hi, Rod. Hi, Rod. Were you an agitator? Okay, let's get back to the debate. Yes. Let's get back to the debate. Hi, Rod. Were you an agitator? I was not an agitator. I was there filming content and supporting my local community. But I just want to say, Andrew, I'm a liberal. I think communists and the leftists are cringe, man. And they hate me and they wish Damn. death upon me. So they look at me as the same as you. So we are holding hands on that. Trust me. Well, I think we need to have another conversation about this IRI. We had one before and it was pretty good. But no, I watched some of your content. It looked like you were participating in the agitation along with BLM, doing everything that you could to push How? your kind what of. What did I do? You, when you, you were there, you were doing the everything. Fan. That you could you. to profile this as some type of inequality. You don't and that Trump know is responsible you don't know what for this. Yes, I watched bullshit. many. I, You're a bullshitter. You don't know ask IRI yeah, if I was in his chat Let, multiple let, let times. IRI ask handle it, he's show. Ask IRI the if I was not in his chat multiple times. Was I not in your chat? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you respond, IRI. But was I not in your chat multiple times? You even talked to me while I was in your chat. I, Isn't I that true? Remember. This is four years ago, so I don't recall yeah. to be. But but that's what happened, Pisco. I was there. I actually do follow leftist content. And why yes, don't you Pisco. point to a specific of agitation? You just said he said things. Like you can't point to a specific. Yeah, agitation. I was getting into oh, yeah. it, but you just interrupt me. Every yeah, so why don't you go seconds. into it? Then? Yeah, I've been trying to go into it, Pisco. It's crazy. <laughs> Doesn't seem like yeah. it. it. Sounds like you're making fun of people with disabilities. That's what it seems like. No, no, just Dylan Burns. Andrew, you're a cunt. Just... You've always been a cunt, and the only I thing know. that's going to yes. change is one day you might have more cunt kids. Okay. Now, let's continue you with the topic. You don't have any kids because you're gay. I'm bisexual. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what this has to do with anything. Oh, there's that. I cut you a cunt, and you're like, haha, you're gay. I didn't okay? bring it up. You are a child, my friend. <laughs> Fantastic. Whoa. <laughs> anyway. You, it, you don't know anything about IRI. If you're accusing I'll him give. of being a radical leftist, you don't seem to make a distinction between liberals True. and communists. You just think, I don't. You think we're well, all like literal fucking yes, communists. Yes, you're all 
communist, yes. Because they're silly. You sound silly. Yeah. 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 You're mad about the interest rate, yeah. so you pouted for half an hour, didn't say anything. The, int the interest rate, you still don't understand. You mean, so, you mean, you mean I'm allowed to are This is completely degenerated. like Trump. I don't see. We're going to go down the We're going to go down the list. There's two more names. Then we're going to wrap up, ask the questions people donated for, and wrap this up. We're going to throw it over to Pisco, then Gibbs. Then we're going to do final statements. And then we're going yeah, to I mean, read the donations and you can all get out of here. The attack doesn't really work from Andrew because Trump presided over BLM. If you have a problem with how governors were doing it, then you necessarily have a problem with Trump not invoking the Insurrection Act and praising many of the governors who you say are responsible for this. You know, you want to talk about, uh, you know, Minnesota, which where I'm sure you guys are pointing to the things that burned down. Why did Trump praise it? You know, Trump is in charge. He's the person in, who can absolutely mobilize the, um, the the National Guard if he wanted to. And just like in January 6th. And so the attack doesn't really work because as IRI pointed out to you, to the extent that you see a government fault there trump is absolutely responsible for coordinating it and if it is as large and as bad and as society destroying as you say it is you can't possibly say that it's a local issue and it just should be held locally if what you really think is this was crumbling our society and so the attack is is not it doesn't work and of course it doesn't work in light of your um you know kind of downplaying of january 6 as well as other issues and i really think that your behavior tonight andrew has been despicable you've like been crying Man, stop whining it. all you do and, is whine and then you go you go after the moderator just like trump Still did just like sick of are doing and you're you're calling him like you know a degenerate because oh my god oh i'll you. cut your pearls just, harder just like you went after women at the start oh of your my conversation god. oh all, no it's oh, all hate. So mean. It's, it's all oh, hate so mean andrew so it's, mean it's, it's oh, all no. hate it's all hate it's all ugly it's all hate and and frankly it's weakness because you know you're andrew losing mean. on all these points well, and andrew that's mean. why you say in order for me to debate you have to pay you money because you're a scared little rat pisco pisco is happy to debate i think the personal attack of the rules this section culture has just been disregarded in its entirety this episode. We're going to throw it over to Gibbs. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, because I'm the, uh, you know, paragon of not making personal attacks. That's what I'm known for, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah, so I, I, I got to object to a couple of these things. I feel like we'll start with a similar personal attack and start with, hey, you know, I feel like a lot of people, including one of the people on my own side, might need to get one of these tampons that Tim Walls is talking about before we can begin because they don't know stats. It's pretty clear. Just look at Greg, Ab Greg Abbott. We can go to the stats with uh, from text.gov. 85% uh, decrease in immigration here in Texas since Project Lone Star. We've seen all sorts of stuff. I can go by line by line stats. 516,000 legal immigrants have apprehended. 45,000 criminal arrests. 35,000 felony charges. We have had apprehended over 500 million uh, lethal doses of fentanyl, enough to kill every man, woman, and child in the United States just from doing this. So clearly, it's not just an immigration issue. Whenever people keep talking about the immigration issue, and this is part of the reason why Kamala failed so bad, is because hey, listen, it's an infrastructure issue. Texas is on the brunt of this. These other states are on the brunt. There's no infrastructure being built, whether that's whatever being done, like whatever. And then no one cared about this issue. This is how dishonest Dems are. No one cared about this issue until uh, Abbott started shipping people to New York and Chicago and all of a sudden, the Democrat constituents got up in arms and go, hey, maybe we should fix the border. We should build a wall around Texas and stop letting um, them ship immigrants to Chicago. There's actually videos of this i can pull them up uh, if we go one two later i know someone's gonna try to say source don't worry i have them i know that's what they do here and so finally on that note it's pretty clear after they lied about the border they lied about biden's competency which oh god they cooed him he's gone they took him out back and shot him like a dog the guy's literally on a beach it's crazy and y'all are sitting here going oh whatever whatever it didn't happen gives taking the bait it's clearly after 12 16 years where the uh, democrats have controlled the president it's not trump's fault for the little time where he tried to fix the goddamn catastrophe that is the economy goddamn catastrophe is foreign policy i mean it, look under trump russia didn't invade uh, under uh, biden russia okay, invaded is this your Israel's ending statement or was this like it's a statement? no no this is just all these things that they've it's, lied it's about like an internally statement. and yeah well it's not an ending statement. i got more don't worry i'm okay. just saying all these people have been lying <laughs> completely the whole time and then they want to sit here and talk about oh personal tax, good faith, bad faith, whatever. Maybe just stop lying and admit that everything's been bad since the start with Biden and nothing's got better statistically. True. Okay, we're now gonna, we're gonna do out a few questions uh, and then we're going to wrap it up. Let me just go down the list of questions that people donated for. This is one for Andrew. Uh, oh, no, that's just a joke. Half of them are jokes, actually. We're just gonna go past the jokes. I assume you guys don't want those. Do, 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 do. No, that's an insult. That's an insult. That's an insult. That's well, unless insult. they're funny, <laughs> we'll hear, right? Most of them are not funny. Most of them are okay. <laughs> most of them are just angry. Okay. Here's one. A lot of fat jokes. Uh, uh, 
For Pisco, why do you think Harris's policy recreating the market condition that ultimately led to the housing bubble crash in 2008 will result in anything other than having another market crash beyond 2025? From Harris 385. Yeah, I don't think that it is recreating the market conditions of um, the the Great Recession because you're the, the the point is to lower the price of homes. And the the problem with the bubble was, um, on the one hand, these kind of new financial instruments, deregulation of um, housing and lowering standards for who's allowed to get a home. And so this would not kind of invoke those things. I, I don't know that it would um, cause a kind of bubble like we saw in the Great Recession. In fact, I think this would, the attempt would be to lower the price of, of homes and to give people the financial ability to reasonably buy it and purchase a home not to like go above their means and i don't think this would affect the kind of mortgage back back security industry it wouldn't affect the kind of corruption that we were seeing in the the credit rating agencies or any of the kind of uh you know bullshit from fannie mae and freddie mac and so i, I don't think it's on all fours with what was happening in the um the housing crisis uh, which i think is completely different if i may if i can respond if sure yeah are we allowed I, I to respond I think that I actually think that's wrong. I don't think you have good reason to say that. Take aside the plan to who knows what the particulars are to build three million houses, how long it would take, et cetera, et cetera. All of these plans to give money to first time borrowers, et cetera. What that's going to do is drive up the cost of these homes uh, because once these banks realize they own these homes, hey, we could just charge 25,000 more. That's what they're going to do. And it's going to incentivize lenders to give money because now they'll be artificially able to have the down payment on these homes to people that otherwise wouldn't qualify qualify for mortgages, which means that it's more likely that we're going to have a collapse, that they won't be able to pay these mortgages, which is the exact sort of things that led to the 2008 crisis. In addition to that, it'll have the net effect of making these banks more landowners, because what will happen will be people will be able to purchase these homes and get mortgages. And then once they default on the mortgages, they will become the property of the bank, which means it will consolidate home ownership in the hands of the wealthy even more, which will have the net effect in the long run of meaning that the people that are on the lower and middle income scale that elsewise would be able to qualify legitimately for these mortgages won't be able to do so. Also, one little pet peeve I have is uh, like a little rude hutch to talk to your audience while someone else is talking. Just a little pet peeve. You should, I leave my audience here what you're saying when I talk. Just saying. I'm not trying to be rude. That's all people doing it. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'll say to anyone. Andrew's been doing this the whole time. Andrew's audience knows what I think, so I didn't see him doing it. That's fine. That's my response. Okay. We got some more questions. Um, this one is simple. Can each person give their best prescribed policy for their preferred candidate? And I'm going to start with Gibbs. Just make it quick. Five seconds. Just say a policy. Gibbs. Yeah, sure. Uh, I want uh, wall and immigration before, and I want it easier for people to come, and I want security at the border where we funnel people in through uh, legal uh, ports. Could have just said wall. That would have been even more basic. But, but Bill, it's both immigration reform is important too. Like you got you can't have one without the other. Like that's Gravity that's something I think people work. people bash like Republicans. Like if you're near the border, you need we know we need reform. We want people like this wasn't to quick. Work. Okay, I know. I'm sorry. It was, well, it was, I would just clarify. It was the I'm sorry. But five seconds for everybody. You, Andrew. That's all. Uh, all progressives in prison. Okay. Uh, Hutch. Paid uh, family and sick leave. All right. Six thousand dollar child tax credit. I think that would help a lot. Joe. Weapons embargo 100% towards Israel. Uh, that's for Jill Stein, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Uh, Pisco. Uh, my favorite is the personal. I don't think it's the best for the, necessarily for the country, but my personal is the Supreme Court reform. Okay. Rob? Uh, firing everyone who's engaged in lawfare. Got you. And Turk? Abolish uh, the NFA. Got you. Uh, to do... do. For Andrew, what what do you fear more? Giving a definition of insurrection or letting Pisco talk without spurging the fuck out? You mean Pisco interrupt the entire panel the entire night? Regardless of who was talking. And not only that, it, that was not my burden in that debate. Uh, unfortunately, many, many people reviewed that, and Destiny got fucking wrecked just like Pisco would. Neither one of these idiots have any clue what they're talking about. Anytime they're pressed on any issues, all they do is deflect and do what aboutisms. They're not debaters, they're morons. Okay. Can you explain to me just real quick? Can I just ask him a question? 
Did you put? No, money you can't in the ask a question. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, you have just, to put twenty dollars in the super chat. Real, 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 okay, but like, yeah, actually, that's right. You have to give twenty dollars super yep, chat. Uh, you have to twenty dollars. You, you have to PayPal me twenty dollars. Hodge, use your video <laughs> game money. Send in a super you know? chat, bro. It's a donation so, section. So, yeah, you did really. Okay, okay. Black I'll, I'll, I'll give the one example. Marketing stuff, dude. Come on. Look, we'll go towards the end. Hodge, I'll let you go first so you can ask him a question in your any statement. That okay? No, it's all right. Let's just get past him. Okay. I mean, he just attacked me some more. Can I, can I have 20 seconds to respond to what he just said? Okay, or but no? then we got to move on, yeah. okay? Okay, the, the only and point then Andrew might be you, able to respond, and then we'll you, go on for another you, five you, minutes. You heard Andrew say to Tom Foolery, I have a secret definition of insurrection, but I'm not going to reveal it until I have my next opponent on the definition of insurrection. It's it just more games with him. It's more absolute, like, little ways to try to get an edge, whether it's yelling over people or calling people gay or calling people, like, um, Down syndrome. Him. it's all bullshit it's part of the narrative he's an idiot himself well the reason that these people are allergic to, to logic they don't seem to understand when the burden of proof is on them even if i had a set of beliefs I'd never have to reveal what those beliefs were to do an internal critique on your position of what is true or if x ought to be true they don't understand this because they're fucking stupid all of them fucking stupid i've blown everybody on this panel out before i arrive hutch all of them hutch was gonna cry he looked like he was gonna cry well you're you're less stupid than most of them. i was bald but, well, but you look like you were gonna cry hutch but anyway there's my 20 seconds you look like you're gonna cry tonight Andrew. okay let's, on the interest rip. let's reel it up uh that'll be it we're gonna do ending statements now go around everybody shout out your channels and give your last thoughts in the discussion uh do not ask a question to somebody that has already you know, past you. You can ask a question to somebody who's going to answer after you, but obviously they can't respond. So we're going to start with, uh, let's start with Turk. Yeah. So, uh, I was prepared for a different prompt and <laughs> I tried to answer the prompt given today. And then we completely, uh, got off the rails talking about stuff that clearly was evident with the actual debate that happened this week uh and everyone kind of failed for the trap i think rob i think did the best trying to stay on the topic here yeah so a tip to rob there uh i really again i think kamala delivered the best uh i during the debate i could actually i was like man this is not going well and that it just shows just how bad trump performed in the debate but again it's like when it comes to policy People see through some of the stuff that was said on Kamala's side just because there wasn't a lot of substance there. I really wish there could have been more substance, but the moderators were just not having it. They wanted to vet through Trump's previous errors and all of his bad bugaboos, which, you know, we've talked about for the past four years, eight years. Actually, we talked about it while he was in office and we did the same thing tonight. So I think I should just go play Diablo for some more. <laughs> Amen. What build are you running? Uh, this is a uh, barrage rogue, or yeah. Okay, now we're gonna throw it over to Gibbs. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, in closing, I think the age-old expression of quickness is quickest does about sums up what we need to do. The quicker we can get uh, Kamala and Biden out of there, the better. Uh, you know, everyone made fun of Trump during the debate, since we talked about the debate a lot, which, like I said, wasn't the topic I prepared for, but we were ready. Um, you know, he, he made he made fun light of the uh, issue the taxpayers have with Kamala saying, hey, we're going to advocate for transgender surgeries for illegal immigrants in prison. You know, and I thought that was so outlandish, and I Googled it. Turns out she gave a whole speech to uh, the ACLU where she advocated for this in quite a bit of detail. Well, I know we didn't cover that. I wish we had. I have all the quotes and stats ready. I guess it was a trap that uh, didn't get laid, and I didn't get the bite on like Rob would like to describe for me. But, you know, I was ready for this trap. Either way, uh, it's terrible. The economy is terrible. Foreign policy is terrible. I, I, you, listen, if you think that it's going to be positioned to be better under Kamala, brother, let me tell you, you got three uh, brain cells and one of them just died gasping for air because you forgot how to breathe. It's terrible. I, I, I don't know how anybody can be in favor of voting for Kamala right now with everything so blatantly, obviously bad. The border, economy, foreign policy, it's a wash. Kamala has no answers. Her answers are vague. Trump does have answers. You can look them up. You know, what I keep hearing is buzzwords, opportunity economy. Vote Trump. Don't vote Kamala. You can find me everywhere as Admiral Gibbs. We do gaming and politics and a lot of general bullshit. Good times. Let's go. 
Kamala blew Trump the hell out of that debate. It's obvious. Everyone's saying it. Even the conservatives on this debate are saying it. All of the punditry is saying it practically, and they're coping because their daddy can't handle any possible uh, loss or him, you know, perceiving to be on the downswing at all. Um, in terms of the two candidates themselves, there couldn't be possibly a greater contrast, both in substance and in character. In substance, I, Kamala's hair, uh, uh, Kamala Harris's policies are way better in every possible way. An actual plan to address the immigration crisis, um, the housing proposal that she's putting forth, the child tax credits that she's putting forth, her changes to the Affordable Care Act and making health care work better for everyday Americans, um, to say nothing of the other kind of issues that um, maybe are less in, in front of your face but are, are just as significant, uh, the Supreme, Supreme Court reform, which are badly needed, uh, among other changes as well. But this really should be an election about character. Who do you trust to be the commander in chief? Who do you trust to, to, to wield that office and be looking out for you and not themselves? And on that score, there couldn't be even a, you know, a brighter possible line between these two individuals. Trump tried to steal the 2020 election and end our democracy and end the peaceful transition of power. Kamala didn't do that. And Kamala, if she loses, you can bet that uh, she is going to gavel in Donald Trump's win. I guarantee it if she loses the election. Um, Donald Trump is all about himself, and he's not even mentally or cognitively fit to be the president of the United States. You saw him on that debate stage, unable to really put together two thoughts, and at times, you know, biting easy bait that it's so obvious it's bait. In real time, it's bait. Uh, you think he's not going to do that with Vladimir Putin? You think he's not going to do that with um, Kim Jong-un or any of these other leaders who are going to eat him for lunch, as uh, Kamala Harris said? And so if you love America, if you love our Constitution, if you love the fact that we're allowed to vote and have our vote matter and count, you should vote for Kamala Harris. Do not put this guy within an inch of the Oval Office again, because he's just going to abuse the power like he did for four years. Okay, over to Joe. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, Donald Trump is a, is a no-go for me, but I think it's very important for me to say this, so I really make sure like where I sit on this is distinct from the other um, people on this panel, right? So the Biden administration is a full partner in the genocide in Gaza. And while Democrat leaders claim to be tirelessly working on a ceasefire, they provide over $20.8 billion in weapons to Israel's mass slaughter of Palestinians since October 7th. And Democrat leaders have repeatedly demanded, sorry, Democrat voters, excuse me, have repeatedly demanded for an arms embargo and a permanent ceasefire from the Biden administration. And polling's on the side of support for that. And at the Democratic convention, you had uncommitted delegates, some of which that I voted for, that were censured and rejected from just the premise of speaking at the event itself. And the Harris campaign and congressional Democrats across the country have had ample opportunity to adopt some type of humanitarian position on Gaza. Instead, Democrat leaders just remain on a staunch war criminals who facilitate genocide and carry out flagrant violations of national and international law. For me, it's no votes for genocide. I cannot support either candidate. And for me, as its current state, Jill Stein is my only answer. And also, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash Joe Lewis, two O's, J-O-O-E. Wait, wait, you said, wait Jill, sorry, Jill Stein, you said? Yeah, he said Jill Stein. Yes. He's a Jill Stein voter. Yes, I am. Um, I do appreciate the time. I really like talking to all of you guys. This is my first time engaging with Andrew Wilson. Very, very cool. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me. Speaking of Andrew Wilson, Andrew Wilson. Yeah, happy to engage with you in the future. If you ever want to have a discussion, I'm happy to do that. Uh, thank you to the panel, including Dylan Burns, for hosting it. You might think I was a little hard on Dylan this evening, but just uh, full disclosure, Danabo, uh, the recruiter, requested that I be mean to Dylan. I guess he needed some additional sound bites. And so all I did was fulfill the request of his uh, his recruiter. So you can't really get mad at me for that. When it comes to Pisco, for instance, uh, Pisco brings up the idea that uh, I, you know, requested that he pay for a debate, but all I was doing was holding the same standard that Destiny holds, that you have to have some criteria. If you don't have the criteria for the sub count in order to come on my huge channel, Pisco, then I think that payment is fair. Now, would I charge anybody else but Pisco? Probably not, but Pisco complained and bitched and whined about it, so I just couldn't help myself. Now, on top of all of that, let me just point out that wrecking you idiots is the funnest pastime that I've ever had in my life. I've made Hutch cry. He cried. Oh, let me off, please. But anyway, okay, I want... I Back to this, back to this. This was a bait and switch. We did not get the actual topic. All the conservatives on here are complaining about it because 
Uh, we were told that this was going to be a who's in a better leadership position, Kamala Harris or Trump. And it turned out that that was not the actual topic. You can see them all nodding their heads because we had a bait and switch done on us. But we still made the best of it anyway. Not that we should have because progressive scumbags lie all the time in order to get you pin pigeonholed into topics you didn't even agree to under premises that you didn't agree to either. Now, to also maximize on the rest of this, I would like to thank the conservatives, especially, and IRI, who had a good head on his shoulders this evening, the only one besides the conservatives who did happy to have a combo with you in the future as well. My name is Andrew Wilson. I am the host of the one and only Crucible, the fastest growing debate channel on YouTube, to my knowledge. Uh, I'm a political analyst satirist, and uh, also I engage in blood sport debates, and I uh, appreciate it, guys. Okay, I do want to just throw out there that the topic was who's better to lead the country forward and it did become a discussion on policy. We just opened on the debate. The discussion was 90% economic policy, 90% policy. So I think you guys debated the topic you prepared for. Anyway, continuing, uh, we're gonna throw it over to- Yeah, I mean, after Rob moved it over to that, right? What do you mean? When, once it was said that that's, I was like, yeah, that's the topic, let's start with the debate. Yeah. And then yeah, we, had said, we, we, we had that discussion. We were strong. We had that discussion. This is called uh, moving moved. the goalpost. Yeah, I had a whole time opening prepared. Prepared. I would definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely You had the discussion you wanted. We just opened on the debate, the big news story that 70, 80 no, million no, people saw. Fair, we hosted open. a panel show. We wanted to get audience to see the debate. If it was just another Harris-Trump debate, it's not a bait about the switch, debate. It's a bait and switch, bro. It was a bait and switch. Well, on, you had me, the discussion you wanted. It wasn't a bait and switch. I just opened on, with, let's talk switch. about the debate. Who hold won? Well, I do want to make one caveat. I know I'm the new guy and I was recruited. I I feel that might not have helped because I definitely had a whole different opening prepared for the other topic and I would have done something different. But it's like, you know, I'm not worried. I'll adapt to whatever because I ain't scared. But it did seem a little bit baby switchy, just like uh, from like. Just uh, I had the concept been, never of the debate. Here before. Never been here. But before, also put, I also put like post presidential this. debate in parentheses to let you guys know that depending on the you know the presidential debate, this presidential debate topic is going to be on the debate. So it's not like any nobody knew we were going to talk about the debate today. I just I just didn't read the question word for word. I just threw it I threw it out very casually. In the future, I'll make sure to make go on a contract and I'll be sure to read word for word, byline by byline, okay? Now, who's the last two people left? I know there's two people left. Rob and My boy, Rob. IRI. So I'll throw it over to Rob. And me. Oh, then I'll throw it over to Hutch first. It needs to be in order. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're... I mean, like, listen, the, after Trump's debate with Biden, he requested another debate. After his debate with Kamala, he's now saying that's it. Uh, I think he obviously got rattled. Uh, she walked right up to him to start that debate, shook his hand, looked him right in the eyes, was staring at him for 95% of that debate. He barely looked at her. He was totally outclassed the entire time. I think that was obvious and I think the polls reflect that. In terms of who is uh, better suited to lead the country, just take a look at the two parties right now and just tell me what you guys think. And if we had more time, I would love to have asked my conservative counterparts do you feel like the Republican Party is in a better position now than they were in 2016? I think the answer is obviously not. The modern American conservative project is in, is in shambles. The House is chaos. They ousted their own House Speaker for the first time ever. They had uh, one of the worst midterm performances uh, in modern history during an economic downturn. The Democratic Party, in contrast, is has never been more cohesive and unified in my entire life. I like our chances. Uh, I think we're looking pretty good to win the House. I think we're looking pretty good to win the presidency and the Senate isn't completely out of reach. And so I think we are the adults in the room. And I think that uh, the modern conservative project right now, it's just, a it's a joke. It's ridiculous. I think people, most people understand this, but. Uh, Dylan, Thanks just real quick, if, if, if you don't mind, I'd just like to ask Hutch very briefly. Hutch, uh, yes. would you be willing to continue this debate with me with Rob Knorr uh, moderating after this is done? No, I'm getting dinner, bro. Okay. If you want to set up a conversation about politics some other time, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ira? Actually, no, Rob. It would be conservative, so Rob. Yeah, you know that, Rob. All right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, uh, so I do think that the topic wasn't initially what we agreed to. It is worth mentioning because initially then it perceives as if I'm on the side of the lefties, like I said. But I do think that we adapted. And uh, the only reason I think it's worth mentioning because I am vaguely aware that 
someone not understanding the specific topic before has led to a lot of controversy. So I just want to get on record, even though I think we did adapt and I don't think it harmed my performance whatsoever. I think I did great. I appreciate everyone's interactions on here, even those that are going harder than others. Obviously, I have love in my heart for the conservatives on the panel. Even Gibbs, who I was shitting on because I was upset that I laid a trap for Hutch and you stepped on my toes and it took me 20 minutes to get to it. But to talk about this briefly, I think Trump underperformed in the debate. I think he did poorly. I think Kamala Harris did poorly, but less poorly. I don't think it'll have a big effect when it whatsoever when it comes to how this election would be proffered. I think that what I tried to do is what Trump should have done is to not allow the deflections that you see that gets off the target of Kamala Harris has been hidden. She hasn't explained her position. She seems to, when she ran for president previously and was very clear about positions, she seems to have now done a 180 on those, but we haven't heard that from her mouth. We just hear from surrogates and other people on mainstream media places that are saying it. She seems to be running a vibes camp campaign that the establishment institutions, including the majority of the legacy media, is completely dragging her across the finish line. But if if that's what the election becomes about, and I get it, I get what Hutch is saying, like, oh, despite the poor economics, Democrats did better than expected in 2022. Yeah, that's the point. That's why I'm a populist. I think these institutions are corrupt and they control the narrative. And when you control algorithms on places like Google and the majority of the legacy media and academia and the entertainment industry and the intel agencies are on your side and lying about things like the Hunter Biden laptop, et cetera, putting their thumb on the scale every election. Yes, it makes it likely that the party that has disastrous policies ends up winning elections. And it, I'm predicting that will happen again. I am predicting that Kamala Harris will win. But it is no doubt that she's hiding. And if the de- election is about the track records of Trump and what the country was like under him economically and through the border, it was doing phenomenal. And then when we look at the Harris-Biden administration, which it's just an empty suit that was running as Joe Biden, and it's the same as Kamala Harris, it'll be people behind the scenes. I found it humorous at one point, IRI said, who are those people behind the scenes running things? Right, who's running the presidency now, IRI? You don't know. That's the whole point. Oh, but 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 my democracy, right? My democracy. Uh, the most anti-democratic thing I've seen in uh, modern elections is the entire establishment gaslighting the American people about Biden's mental health. Then once the primary was effectively de facto given to him, coming out and forcing him out, and then installing a woman in Kamala Harris that would not have had any chance of winning a primary or would have a very small chance, and then basically keeping her under wraps and saying that all of her policy prescriptions will be said later. We even have our surrogates going out like, she shouldn't talk to the press. Why should they? People will look at her policies and try to spin them negatively. No shit. And she had a chance in this debate, despite what I think was Donald Trump's mis- was failure. I think she, if she wanted to be transparent, she could have outlined specifics on many of these policies and what her agenda would be. She could have explained to the American people why she has so radically changed her position on Green New Deal things, de- funding the police, getting rid of private insurance, banning fracking, paying for transition surgery for illegal immigrants, building a wall. All of these things are things that she had incredible, incredible articulation about being one direction before. And now she's just saying, I've changed, but my values have been the same and hasn't explained any of it. So I did not take the bait. I correctly articulated why the economy is in shambles and it's the fault of the Harris-Biden administration, why the board is in shambles and it's the fault of the Harris-Biden administration, why we can see the policies of Donald Trump were doing good for this country, all people, even the middle class, lower class, and people in inner cities, people in rural America, people in the suburbs, and that his presidency would bring more of that, much better than the failures of the Harris-Biden administration that is ran by committee and would put, oh, is only pissing on your leg right now, telling you what they think you want to hear because they're refusing to explain why they do 180s on their policy position or why they didn't accomplish the great things that they say they're now going to do so for the past three and a half years when they controlled so much of our government. I'm Rob Noor. You can find me. Just search my name, N-O-E-R-R. Thanks. It's called Normal America with Rob Noor. He never shills himself. Are you right? Yeah, Rob, you really got to work on brevity, man, because you say some interesting stuff, but you fucking ramble for 10 minutes and everybody tunes out, man. So you really got to start trying to fine tune it a little bit, champ. And I'm glad 
I may be bad at debating, but at least I'm not a pawn of Russian propaganda and like you who was featured on Tim Pool's The Culture War that was on Tenet Media's YouTube site. So congratulations, Rob. That was I, you, by the way. One of Russia's stupid pawns, you idiot. That's the above. That being said, Kamala yeah. Harris had a great debate. These Republicans, conservatives are coping because hey, she got to knock it out of the park and she only did okay. But she did just fine, and I'd be upset too with all the energy on our side and my candidate saying, oh, they eat the dog, they eat the cat. So yeah, it's gonna be a little frustrating. I think Kamala's got this in the bag, so you guys need to start working on how to pronounce her name because you're gonna be saying it for eight years. But to my friends out there who are voting, please, do not look away from the Senate because you're going to be frustrated if Kamala Harris wins and these Republicans control the Senate. And it's all going to come down to a couple of races, specifically Montana. Give John Tester some love. He's a Democrat running for re-election. He's a great guy. Please check it out. John Tester in Montana. Put some energy into his cause. Thank you, Dylan. I appreciate you. I go by I'm really important because I fucking am.